Yes, it's Tuesday night again, and I'm here with Jason of Faithful, Honest, and True. Uh, this is Marcus C. Science Film Labs. We're here to discuss the evolution versus creation topic, same as always. Uh, how you doing tonight, Jason? Oh, good, thanks. Good night. Glad to hear it. Good to hear it. So you wanted to talk about uh, Lucy? The Yeah, I would. Uh, we could discuss some uh, some of the hominids and uh worked our way into uh some kind of open mic night thing here so yeah <laughs> yeah oh well i don't know what Still. do you want to talk about what about lucy what oh, just the, these yeah. little these little sasquatches <laughs> yeah yeah well, you have it i mean you have references yeah, and this is this is Lucy's kind, or what Lucy's supposed to be. Yeah, and basically you have a a chimpanzee top, even the longer arms, you know, and then then a very human bottom. So it's it's interesting. For me, I mean, looking for a transitional, I would expect something with. Um, Possibly like ape-looking feet that were becoming human feet rather than fully developed human feet. It would only make sense to me, but what do you say, Jason? About this, I'd just this say creature? that 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 if they found human feet in that uh, two-kilometer area or whatever it was, two thousand meter or whatever, two-mile area or whatever it was, they found all the bones over, and then I would say that they just found human feet and just put them on the ape or a human foot bone and called it an ape bone, a transitional or something. You know, like, yeah, there's no way that uh, they they had human feet and were looking like that. If there was pe things walking around back then with uh, those sort of feet, they were humans, not little Sasquatches. <laughs> I agree. And it's like they're out there trying to find these evidence for these missing links. And they're coming up short, and that's and that's what's real. I mean, they've been looking for it since the 1800s, and what we have to show for all this searching is like these seven skeletons, you know, and these are partial skeletons. These aren't even full skeletons. So, I'll just yeah. and you know, it was since Darwin that they proposed we're out of Africa. So they've been searching in Africa for these missing links for quite a while now. And still, like I said, coming up short, you know, not that lack of evidence is proof of anything, but uh, it definitely makes a statement to me. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but lack of there's no evidence to prove that it is anything, you know, it's just a uh, lot of rubbish. Like, uh, like they find a human bone or something in the in the fossil layer or in the, you know, 3.6 million years ago, what they say is 3.6 million years ago, and they just put it into a, you know, say, oh, this must have come from Lucy, the, um, the Sasquatch, the miniature Sasquatch. It, it would have sure. had to have come from her because who else could it, where else could it have come from? I don't know, but if they did find human <laughs> bones, they'd just, they wouldn't even show people, I don't think. Or well, they'd, you know, get the bones and deform them. Or, you know, when you break them out of the rock matrix, chip them out slowly, you can, uh, you know, like, you could shape it a little bit to the way you want it to be shaped, you know, sort of thing. So I don't trust anything they do because they've done stuff like that. Oh, yeah. When they reconstruct those pieces, parts, those little fragments that they're pulling out of the rock, and they go and they put them together like a jigsaw puzzle and they glue them all together. It's like, can you really call that science? Or like, like you know, take measurements of these reconstructions and then make claims in scientific papers from them with any accuracy? I, I doubt that. So, But yeah, like you said, here's these footprints right here, the Latoli footprints. This is why they assume that uh, these critters had human footprints but like you said, it's the supposed age of this rock layer that they're going off of. So, yeah, 
Yeah, I know. It's uh, so they basically just go to the rock layer, and they if they can't if they get to a layer and they find a human bone in it and they can't change the age of the layer, which is often what they do. They say, "Oh, well, this layer mustn't be this old; it must be that old." Um, then I would say, um. I mean, they just basically, you know, if they find a human bone in it, sorry, I just lost track of what I was saying. If they find a human bone in it, they're just going to call it a, say it's from a Australopithecine. It's as simple as that. Or something else, or call it something else. It, or say it's an ape bone or whatever. They're not going to ever admit that uh, there was human bones back then. Yeah. And, and uh, here you have a comment here from joe friday in the chat uh johansson robbed human graves i trust him so oh wow there's yeah there's allegations of uh of grave robbery should get, should get him any get him to tell us about it yeah yeah i gotta drop the link in the chat still i was just saying um i mean and you I'll know like i like to make the point when i hear this you know comment that you know, paleoanthropology is basically grave robbing. I mean, depending on your definition of grave, I mean, you have elephant graveyards and such, and, you know, so if elephant graveyards are graveyards, and these are definitely graveyards too. But beyond that, he was actually robbing actual graves in Ethiopia from from what I understand. So, but I gotta, I gotta see oh. the, uh, the paperwork on that. <clears throat> but. That could explain well, where that very human-looking sacrum came from. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I suppose it would uh, it, it, it would explain uh, a lot. But if they find that uh, human-looking sacrum, it is a human sacrum. It's not a human-looking. It's just a sacrum that's been under tons of mud when it was when it was when it went in there, it was originally under tons of mud and it got deformed a little bit and it just still looks identical to a human sacrum. It just, it just, it just got deformed a little bit and the bottom two um, holes it broke away. It broke away. So it basically just chipped away. It's it's no, when do they ever, look at those, all those fossils where they got all the, where you got all the apes, all the different fossils from all the different Australopithecines lined up. I mean, the, the the bones always are chipped or broken or whatever. I mean, I hope they're not trying to claim that because it's got a less amount, a, a different amount of holes in it to say a human sacrum that it's that it that it proves that it's not human that it's from a, a transitional. That would be hilarious. I'd love them to do that because you can see as clear as day there was two, the bottom two holes were there. It's just broken away at the side you can see it as clear as any it's to me it's as clear as anything anyway yeah i fully agree and here we have a photo of just that sacrum and it's yeah, showing it how it, the worn areas that you were talking about too yeah they've broken out broken away chipped away so it's got those holes were there it's just a human sacrum it's outright human and even because it's too small it's not too small i mean you got pygmies in the Amazon rainforest today that would that would have sacrums that size full-grown people I mean if you're a pygmy and you have someone that uh, say a pygmy with dwarfism can you imagine how small a sacrum would be on a female pygmy with dwarfism okay, just think about how small the sacrum would be it would be tiny so as oh, to yeah. say and we got we got them alive today um people like that so sure. to say that that's not a human sacrum I mean I've seen, oh yeah, it's, uh, it's I, saw, well I, I saw a couple. Age. I used to live near a town called New Norfolk, and there was this guy that was over seven foot tall, and his missus was only about three and a half foot tall, but she was fully grown. Like they must have. I'm sure there was someone told me they were circus performers or something. I'm not being smart. They they literally were. I think they met in the circus sure. or something. But but and their son was like regular height, my height. And, and and they were older at this stage. But that woman, only three and a half foot tall, can you imagine how small her sacrum would be? 
And often people yeah. that are like short people like that, they've got like slight, not deformities, like they're deformed, but their bones grow just slightly different. You know what I mean? Sometimes like they've got these, these problems with their, what they buy their bones grow and stuff. So to, to find something like this out in the wilderness and, and then a fossil like this, and then to say that it's, it's just because those things are broken off at the bottom or it's too small or, you know, to be, it's bull, bull rubbish. We got these things in the human range today. So. Absolutely. And I wanted to add that it's well within the range of humankind. Like it doesn't have to be a pygmy from Ethiopia. We're saying like, this is within five millimeters of what would have been considered um, an average female human sacrum. So it's yeah, on but the no, smaller wait a minute. side, but it's not even that much. You, you think of a pygmy with dwarfism, just just like we, we get oh, yeah. dwarfism in all in all ethnic groups, right? So why not pygmies? So you, you got a pygmy, you get a pygmy, and that pygmy gets dwarfism on top of that. The, the sacrum would be even smaller than that. You know what I mean? It's like to say that it's yeah. five millimeters out of the thing is a load of rubbish. It's a load of rubbish. I just told you about a woman that was three and a half foot tall and fully grown, under four foot tall and yep. fully grown, three and a half foot. I mean, and 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 literally, you've got uh, pygmies that that, and just imagine a pygmy with dwarfism. They'd only be about a foot and a half tall, sort of thing, <laughs> two foot tall. You get it any size. You know what I mean? Like today, we'd have people like that walking the earth right now. So to say that those sacrum is five millimeters uh, smaller than the smallest human sacrum recorded is just a load of anyway. Yeah, yeah. Joe because Friday I mean, added um, that the quote about the grave robin that Johansson or Johansson uh, uh, um, allegedly committed is in John Sanford's book. And he also says that because that happened, Ethiopia's government banned all paleoanthropologists for two years because of Johansson. Or paleontologists. Wow. Yeah. yeah, just he would have he would have known what he was doing. Um, he would have known that he was uh, insulting people and robbing graves. Um, but he when he got caught, he would have said, Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know. Oh, that's how he would have got out of it. I didn't know. I, I'm sorry. I I apologize. Yeah, he wouldn't know. <laughs> if he wouldn't yeah. have known. Yeah. Lion sack. Yeah, I mean, if he's that, out there robbing Ethiopian graves out in the in the desert there, I mean that's yeah. That's 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 uh that's some questionable stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Very suspect. <laughs> Yeah, robbing uh, traditional graves of, of any um, tribe of people, like African tribe or Australian tribes, like Aboriginals, and that is, like, really bad. There's even places I, I, I actually was with, I live with an Aboriginal elder in an Aboriginal community in the Northern Territory, and he told me that there's places where if you even walk around, you got to be careful not to break a stick because if you break a stick, you have to be put to death and all this sort of stuff. So... I mean, you know, if you wow. ever break a stick in these sacred areas, like step on a stick, stick and break it, sort of thing. It's it's like they're really full on. You wouldn't find this anywhere in the in the in the media, but this is coming straight from them up in the thing. And and he wasn't just like people are prone to making up stories, but he wasn't making up stories. So I mean, they believe also met and Aboriginals are real big on there. Um, like they even got. Uh, stuff, human remains, Aboriginal remains returned from museums all over the world. Like just only like 10 or 20 years ago or 30 years ago or something, they got them all returned because uh, it's an insult to them. So it, he would have known that it's like, uh, it would have been a similar situation in Ethiopia, I imagine. that That's just my thing. So, and, and even though they're really old, he would have known. You know, because he would have done his homework and he would have known what he was doing was the wrong thing, but he would have said, I, I just imagine, I'm guessing, but I reckon he would have said something like, oh, I didn't realise, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I was just so interested in, you know, sure. something like that. That's my prediction. Sure. And I mean, that's been anthropologists doing that in the past, going and taking... You just broke uh, up. Of, Say that again. The, just the native... Oh, I'm sorry. 
Yeah. How about now? Am I coming through clear? Yeah, now. Yeah, say it again. All right. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the paleoanthropology, they've been taking, um, they've been grave robbing for a long time, taking Native people's uh, remains and putting them on display in museums across the planet, you know. Uh, here in the United States, there was a museum, a military museum that had, well, let's see, I actually have the paperwork here too, so we look at that. But they were basically, they had Native American remains displayed as some sort of precursor to humankind, like showing how they're less evolved than the Europeans, you know. And it was all set up in this museum just to kind of show evolution or the idea of it, you know. And what they're using is basically just differences between groups of people across the planet and <laughs> trying to claim evolution from that and set them all in a row, you know, when really they all came to look the way they are um, through the populations and dispersion across the planet. So here we have a question from Joe Friday, you know, are the orangutan 12 million years old? Well, or is that how they're supposed, you know, how are they supposedly presented on the paleoanthropological tree here? And it looks like coming up to orangutan coming off of Pong, Pongine? Just Pongine? Pongine? So, but yeah, it looks like they're trying to claim uh, 12, min 12 million years of orangutan. <laughs> is that coming through? Yeah, yeah, now it is. That's why I went quiet. If, if I say okay. something, then it's breaking up. If it, yeah. All right. It, it just yeah, broke I see up Joseph in, in the chat. Of words. That's cool. So yeah, orangutan for 12 million years. And then you have gorilla for million years and chimpanzee for about the same. You know, it's like, and then these survived all the way to modern day, but where are these uh, mini Sasquatches, these missing links? Why didn't they make it till modern day? Why'd they all have to die? Why couldn't they have hidden with the gorilla populations? Or, you know, they still have those long arms so they could have escaped to the trees. You know, I just, I don't know. I don't buy it. And then you have Gibbons going back. Whew. That's a long branch. I got to get rid of Joe's comment to see it. Let's see. 16, maybe even 18 million years. Wow. That's a long time. That's a lot of imagination. So what do you think, Jason, about this tree? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Definite imagination. No doubt about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can zoom um, in here. We'll, uh, you can, there we go. Apologize. That's better. There we go. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, like I was saying, you have the Australopithecina or the Australopithecine. Group and their branches go into nowhere because they believe they all died out. I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. I just had to had to do something. <laughs> had to post uh, pictures of um, yeah. Anyway, all right. <laughs> <clears throat> my house, my place. That's all. There all you right go. now. So. Yeah, yeah, it is. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of time and 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 rubbish there. Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah, thousands of years ago, not millions. Yeah, yeah. Even the time oh, scale here is completely imagination. Yeah, <laughs> but it's nice yeah, to know so. uh, what the charts say. You know. And like we've got a detailed one that I've shown to a few of you before about the uh, the royal blue section there, the missing links up to the homo and then the humans, 
Uh, it's all well represented, but you can't even really see it from that. that view. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, all from all from a bunch of uh, bits of bone that they found scattered across the sides of hills. Not even in the one place, yeah. not articulated but in the one place, just scattered across hills, hillsides. Yeah, and some of these, like uh, the Gari, as I've said in the past, the Gari, uh, they're Derimata, Derimita, Derimita. But yeah, so you have Gari and Derimita, and both of those species are imagined from just a few bone fragments. You know, you have the Derimita, the uh, it's got like they've got like two partial mandibles, and from there, an entire species of Australopithecine is imagined. You know, and here with see on the screen, it's too small to see really. Oh, much. you're breaking up. I'll turn my mic yeah. off and and stuff because it might that be affecting you because you just broke up. Then everything you said basically up until about five seconds ago didn't come through. Yeah. Oh man, so that's a shame. You're coming through now, well, uh, so I'll turn my mic off while you while you talk. So just start again. I'll just turn my mic okay. off while you talk. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I was just saying, like, the Australopithecus gari here, uh, they only have several fragments of skull, you know? So that entire species is imagined from bone fragments of what would be a single individual. And they don't even have, say, the forum and magnum or the hole in the, in the cranium that the spinal cord passes through. Which, first of all, to go and claim bipedalism from the placement of the spine is a pretty big leap in, in the first place. But secondly, like, if you don't even have that to go and judge from, and you're trying to claim bipedalism in a very ape-looking skull, uh, yeah, that's, that's a huge leap in logic. So with the, uh, with the agari, this, these these offshoots that go off into nowhere and question marks on top. Uh, even the Sadiba, I mean, the Sadiba is pretty well represented, but the Gari is not. Like, you've got fragments of skull and then a whole species being claimed from that. So, did, did that's you the say, story with all these. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you say the Sativa? Have we got a cannabis a hominid back then? <laughs> have we? Like, a pothead. We got a pothead uh, uh, a hominid back then, people. The Sadiba. <laughs> <laughs> Sativa. Well, you know, you know, it's, you it's, know. It's, it's, we've got a new, we've got a new, um, a new ape. It's called uh, Homo Sativa. Yes, and it was a, it was a, it was fairly yes, a the Homo, yes, the Homo Sativa. Yes. The the uh, <laughs> the A indica. No, I just had to, had to inform <laughs> right. people about that. I don't want them to be ignorant. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> sure, sure. All right. So yeah, the Sativa. You have the Sadiba. It says that there's two individuals on this map. Now, the numbers on the bars, which is pointed out by my friend Joseph there, is the claimed number of individuals of these species. So for the Sadiba, you have two. And these are represented by the two individuals on the right, which I kind of went over last week, but we'll go over it again just for fun. So the MH1 and MH2 are the whole of the Sadiba fine. And I believe that um, Lee Berger had a lot to do with that discovery but i haven't gotten too much into the mh1 and mh2 being that there's like there's nothing else really beyond them to claim for the sediva but they they're fairly complete compared to the other groups uh on that tree so yeah and yeah because they were stoned um joe is is why they walk bipedal you know like <laughs> The sativa, the sativa, the homo sativa, are off there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just just joking. Ah, uh, hey, I see Kitty Mama's in the chat. Hey, Kitty Mama. Um, yeah, I mean they they guess the that they're bipedal. They guess that they can uh, if they can talk or not. Their brain size, the color of their eyes their height, you know, all of this from just fragments of skull. It's amazing what they can tell from a few fragments of skull. They'll probably tell their cousin's name, you know, who knows? <laughs> but yes, no, no, they grunt 
as they got a certain amount of grunts would spell out like you know jason and 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 that's yeah. <laughs> they had like four grunts for a and you know seven grunts for for d and all that sort of stuff oh man i was watching a video the other day it was supposed to be a pre uh human he pre-human man when he's trying to figure out fire and you know just like what to do at night <laughs> yeah <laughs> it just <laughs> well, know, like, was pretty pretty stare at each other in the dark i guess pretty man yeah that's it just sit there in the dark. no no yeah. they're not they're sitting there <laughs> hugging each other in the dark that's what it is <laughs> snuggling around no campfire yeah. you know, oh, oh, like, what was that noise <laughs> don't worry about it that was <laughs> no, oh, man. Language, you know? yeah. i used to have some great pictures it. but i don't have them on air of uh of these scenes of these australopithecine just standing out there it's like what are they even doing they're just standing around they can't write they can't read i don't know you, you've yeah. got nothing but, but yeah so i mean we went into this last week a little bit but i think we should probably i don't know i should go find a video or something maybe try and get someone in here uh no i'll put up the link oh i'll put it up again i suppose all right i don't think anybody wanted to come in but if they don't want it, that's mm -hmm. fine. Don't really mind. Now let's put. I'm sober this this week, people. So I'm not. I'm not drunky. I'm not the drunken master. <laughs> this uh, thing, so it's it's safe. Hey, Robin, how are you? I see you in the chat. And Devin, hey Devin. Welcome, guys. Did, did something just end or something? Everybody's. Anyway, everybody just arrived. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. So, yeah, here you have this book by Johansson. We do like a little reading rainbow bit here. Uh, yeah, this book, uh, if you're interested, don't take my word for it, you know. But this book has all the greatest information on the Lucy discovery that you would ever want to know. It tells you how it was discovered, where it was discovered, when it was discovered, who discovered it, who interpreted the remains that were discovered. And there's some great photos. There's a whole photo section it's it's just a wonderful book but don't take my word for it like i said moving on yep yeah <laughs> i take his word for it he doesn't know what he's talking about that's it <laughs> <There you laughs> <go. laughs> he's a he's a muppet he's a muppet to try to explain things uh, that, that's what did i call you in that thing i think i deleted that <laughs> what is it? Muppet played stuff yeah i didn't want people thinking that i was calling you a muppet for real yeah. I don't know. Yeah, if I know. Still it's, there. it's all good. <laughs> He's the one that told me to call him a muppet, so. people. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't me doing it. <laughs> Here you have this. this Bob and you in, mate, on uh, You know, like those little tattletales <laughs> at school. Sorry. Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, we could watch a video on this. I mean, I've got some. Uh, I've got some decent, some decent videos on the subject, but. Yeah. What do you think? What do you want to do, Jason? Uh yeah, watch a video, I suppose. All right. Maybe a, maybe a go. A goer. Let's see. I mean, here you have a uh, French gentleman. He's he's basically collecting the gravel off the side of this hill to pick through and get all the bones that looked like they could belong to hominids so it'd be like any human or ape remains you know and uh it was really interesting to find out just the methods that they used to collect the fossils at the site because you know i always imagined that johansson and his team of students they went out and actually like discovered lucy of in a small area and it doesn't seem to be the case. It seems like they just went around and dug the gravel off the sides of these hills and um, collected it into bags and in baskets and then laid it all out on long sheets of cloth and picked through the gravel to get the pieces out. So, and again, that, that makes me question the, the claim that there was only one individual found in the side of the hill when Lucy was discovered, especially with the baboon remain now being coming to light, the discovery of the baboon neck bone 
and the Lucy conglomeration really pushes that idea out of out of realm of reality because there you have proven two individuals at that site. Well, they claim the rest doesn't belong to any uh, baboon, though. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the, a lot of those bones would be hard to identify as well. Like it took them a long time to find out that the the bones in um, oh, what is it? Oh, it's one of Erica's favorite, the gutsy gibbon. Um. It's one of her favorite things. I can't remember, but even one of her evolutionist uh, scientists came out and said that the bones are pan, not human, which is ape. And he showed the reason why he showed the bones and this oval shape, the bones. And then he showed the human bone and the human bone's not oval shaped, like the femur bone or whatever it was. I can't remember. Um, it wasn't, it didn't have an oval sort of shape to the bone. And See, Erica probably appealed. Sorry, I'm going off a tangent, but Erica probably appealed to something like um, uh, that the bone was worn away at that time, like we do that, right? So, like I just did it before, but I reckon something like that. And it's actually was human, but because of the wear or deformation, or I don't know, I'm just guessing what she said, but I think I watched it ages ago, but I can't remember. Maybe. So, oh, with the baboon bone. Yeah, no, no, no. With um, this 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 hominid, I can't remember the name of it. <clears throat> oh. uh, but it's it's a uh, it, it 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 it's one of her favorites, and it was just like found to be an ape, nothing but an ape, and it had uh, and I've got a dock on it somewhere, but I've played off on it, and it's got like the femur. I can't remember if it's the femur bone, but whatever bone it is, I think it's the femur has got a slight oval shape um, to the femur bone, slight oval shape on both sides it's clear you know mm. but on the human one on a human one it's round so the only thing she could and so it was basically found to be an ape an extinct ape not a not in the line of humans uh sort of thing it's before lucy i think i'm pretty sure this one um so yeah and oh. I, and the only way she could appeal to that is to say maybe something like I I'd imagine something like either oh, deformation from you know the tons of mud being packed in or or um, maybe it got worn away or something. But yeah, no, the, you could see that the bone was actually oval shaped, full oval shaped. So it was definitely from an ape, not from any you know human transition or anything like that. So it's basically been sort of unofficially, I think or sort of half officially the classed as an ape sort of thing. So there's ones that maybe it was, it could have been Anamensis or even Artie, but I think Artie, there's just a skull, but don't, don't quote me on that. But she, oh, they she's even probably speaking pictures. one of those earlier ones, you know? Yeah. She shows pitch. They even show pictures of it and it looks like an ape, but they say it was in the human line and, and yeah. sells by people, I think, or something like, I don't know. I'm not by yeah, people. The claim whatever. is, yeah, all the Australopithecine are supposed to be bipedal, so everything. But it wasn't Australopithecine. It wasn't Austral. It was before. I th I'm pretty sure. I'm sure. Yeah, it was. It was. It's. It's an one that was before Australopithecine. Oh, so it ended like, up being yeah. part of Pan, or after. I don't know if it's after or before or whatever. I don't know. All I know is, is it was supposed sure. to be some sort of in the line or or a hominid or some sort of hominid. I can't remember the name, but it it, it, it was, and, and they said that it had human like femur bones, right? But it wasn't, it was full ape like femur bones, not human or whatever yeah. the bone was. I don't remember the bone, the, whatever. Um, yeah, there's it, a, it, there's a couple well, early chimpanzee appearing discoveries here. I'll Those two it. little uh, lines going off to the right of that purple pan line. That could have been what she was talking about. And I mean, like, you'd expect everything there to look just like chimpanzee, especially the skull, you know? And, and the, everything in the purple would be not bipedal. So it probably, maybe it got switched from one group to the other because of that. They found out it was not bipedal because of the femur, maybe. That would make sense. I can see that. So. But yeah, here you have uh, their idea going back like 8 million years ago, supposedly. There was some chromosome two fusion event, and they believe that that hypothetical fusion event 
cause bipedalism to appear, you know, and that somehow that population survived uh, till modern day, so being us. So it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense with, um, especially when you consider that the chromosome fusion events we know of, they're single generation events. So this would be one generation going from a chimp to some bipedal chimp thing, you know, that's, that's a big yeah. change. When most of the time uh, in nature, when you see these chromosome fusion events uh, in a single generation, it causes some pretty negative effects. So it causes some very negative things. So yeah. you probably won't grow wings or learn how to walk in a chromosome fusion event. And I really would love to know how their magic chromosome fusion event works. <laughs> It's not directed. But. Yeah. Also, yeah. Anamensis is Anamensis is much I'm older. At the at the moment. Yeah. So while I look, I'll have to. So you have Anamensis going back four million. Right. That's the claim. Yeah, I'm uh, just looking up something. Yeah, sorry, mate. I'll just you fill in for me while I'm looking up. But I'm just trying to find. Sure, I'm just reading the chat here. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, I apologize. I'm looking for a certain photo here to explain. Yeah. So here you have Lucy's skeleton. And as Robin says, you know, it's only, you know, some say 40%, some say 60% uh, complete. I mean, mainly I hear from the museums, you know, 40%. But then if you reflect the parts that you have on either side, you're more like 60%. I say maybe like 40, like, 50 maybe 60 percent yeah with the reflection so which makes sense because you should be able to uh, reflect and you know symmetric animals figure out both sides but but even there you know you're still missing the skull so how complete is it really i mean you have none of the hand bones now there's over 200 bones in these uh in the human body um, the majority of them are in the hands and feet so if you want to talk about completeness, we could go by um, <clears throat> the number of remains. Uh, if that were the case, you know, Lucy's missing her hands and feet. So you'd subtract like, I don't know, 100 bones from the 200. So we could be like, well, we're like half complete. If just considering the, the lack of feet and hands, so. I mean, if you go by number of bones, it's very incomplete. Um, yep. And, and, but this being said, this is actually a great find because the bones that are here, like the sacrum, which is the only one that's really complete, not broken into pieces. We have the sacrum to look at and compare to other things. You know, we don't have a skull, really. We've got a decent mandible that we're looking at. Uh, um, the femur's been cracked in half, you know, so that's kind of hard to say, but we can get a general idea of the length. Yeah. Yeah, and they do believe that it's a female. And it's the most complete afarensis claim. But as far as what we have for the Australopithecine, these are the, this is about the whole of it. So in here, in here you have them all represented, all, all of the major 
uh, discoveries uh, claimed Australopithecine, this missing link kind, these the mini Sasquatches. And you'll see that Lucy is the second most complete find, the AL288-1. So, and that's the one to the left of the one that's got the red around. So AL28-1, that's Lucy. Looks familiar, you know, just like last photo. But the most complete is that little foot skeleton. And while it's the most complete conglomeration, it's not in nearly as good condition as the Lucy discovery. So we can actually find out a lot more about the Lucy discovery. Or from the Lucy discovery, we can, we can pull a lot more information and interpret a lot more from that than we can from the SCW 573 because of how deformed and mangled the SCW 573 remains are. So, and I think that's interesting. But with that, we do have a skull. And like I've shown in the past, you know, uh, um, the skull of this SCW 573 looks quite like a gorilla skull. And in fact, it's, it's my opinion that the skull, at least for this conglomerate, is a gorilla skull. Okay, um, it, it, hang on, just let me see. Oh, sorry, I spoke a bit too soon. Here we go. It's, let me see, what's um, just below, hang on. It's a real nightmare. You know, uh, getting around. Um, here we go. Um, hang on. Is that now the main reasons I believe that this sorry. is a gorilla skull? Is, yeah, it's all right. It's first the, the jutting out of the <clears throat> of the jaws here, jutting out the prognathism. Uh, it about matches, you know. So you have that, but that's not all that matches. So you have here you have the anatomy of what would be the mandible. You know, you have the neck, the ramus, would be the body. And then the angle of the mandible there, which is basically the circumference of the back side of it. So if, if you look at, at the at the skull, you know, and you look at the circumference of the angle of the mandible and realize it's the same exact shape. Okay. And you have that boxiness of the jaw as well. Uh, now looking at the skull you realize that the cranium is a lot different. Now, there's a good reason for that. I mean, when you when you take a good look at the shot, of, a good shot of this of the front of this thing, you realize that it's been caved in, it's been compressed, you know, it's been badly deformed, and that'd be the reason for the misshapen cranium. But it's a dead match for that mandible. So that's one of the reasons we believe it's a gorilla skull. The second reason we believe it's a gorilla skull is the sutures of the skull match. So, and these are where the skull, um, as you age from an infant or from a baby to an infant, where the skull fuses together and becomes one solid uh, cranium. Now, the patterns of the skull of the sutures of the skull are different from primate to primate. <clears throat> and it was interesting to find that the gorilla skull also had the same sutures. It has those three lines on top and then the triangular shape bottom section, which is on, you know, the human skull as well, that triangular shape, but lacking those three lines. And it's just such a perfect match. I, I just love it. Anyway, but even here, you can see that the bottom of the cranium has been forced up and in. Okay. And comparing all these skulls together. So that was an interesting thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's definitely... <laughs> It's just look, see, like I said, the deformation. There it is, right there. 
on ST, S, STW573. Uh, that, that, that's got the, that's defamation from being packed in the mud. See, same as the uh, human sacrum, uh, the Lucy sacrum. So, sure. You, you yeah, the flowstone layer. This was so you can see that it's a ape. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah there's no way to say that's not an ape skull. It's just compressed you know, in, in tons of mud. And it's it's like it's literally sitting has it literally has tons and tons and tons, like hundred thousand millions of tons in some cases of, of rock sitting above it. It's in an area where it's under a lot quite a lot of pressure for a world, you know. So sure. <laughs> if it if it deformed, I mean it'd have to be down really deep, really, 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 really deep for it to be able to become plastic enough where it could deform without cracking so it can't deform once it's fossilized and we know the fossilization process can happen within hours there's got a a, a study on that um <clears throat> so they've, they've literally f found in secular science that fossilization can happen without in hours under the right conditions so this would literally have to happen either before um before it, it fossilized or it would have to be so deep where it got so hot down there that the rock starts to turn plastic and 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 that would deform and then it could deform and then it'd have to come back up for some reason have to go down and then come back up sort of thing <laughs> which would be pretty funny but, yeah. so the yeah. helanthropus uh chadensis yeah if you remove that picture sure i'll, I'll show them and we have a question here from Robin. She says, so if we didn't evolve and were created, who were these people, like the later species? Uh, yeah, that's right. They, 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 there's not much you know, in the fossil record uh, to, to, to show anything, really. It, 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 it's, it's, except for it, it sort of leans more towards us. That's why they have to make up these stories about... Um, uh, about this you know like when they find something that's a human bone or a human looking bone as they say it, they have to put it into an australopithecine or bury it either one yeah so uh here we go we've got uh we got this um uh so as we see many other researchers disagree with earlier claims uh by the discoverer that s tinnitus is, it, is that like tinnitus when you got tinnitus in your ear tech tech and tech tech and not tech how do you pronounce that can you pronounce that for me i would say chadensis chadensis okay yeah all right chadensis. like the t would be okay. silent almost i'd imagine yeah oh okay but, Thank but you. i'm just saying looking at the skull right from the get-go even from far away here like it's kind of it's fine far away but you can tell that it's a total reconstruction like it was just pieces pieced together yeah. oh shaped together i didn't I, I i didn't go back to where i started off from. hang on i gotta go um i gotta go back oh no 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 i have to go further down uh here we go um here we go okay so uh you've got many other claims discover that that should tonight what was it again Chad chadensis yeah chadensis chadensis yeah. den d-e-n we'll say it okay. like that um, we're probably it, butchering it, it, but that's what chadensis, we'll yeah chadensis was neither a human um ancestor nor uh could it even walk upright all claiming that the case uh for bipedally uh based on an incomplete femur uh, is dubious at best and and that it actually matches a primate um nature and relations of uh uh, uh ch <laughs> uh based on our analysis uh the tm266 partial femur lacks any uh feature consistent with regular uh regular bouts of terrestrial bipedal is uh bipedal travel uh instead its gross morphology suggests a, a derived it derived pan a pan derived so a derived pan like um 
uh, I can't, Bullen, bull, bull, I can't pronounce that, uh, B-A-U-P-L-A-N, I don't know, uh, body plan. So basically what they're saying is an eight body plan. Let me, let me, let me, let, let, let me, uh, let me, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, let, let, let me translate it for you. It's basically the morphology suggests uh, it came from an ape, basically, is what they're saying. Uh, I know that much. So it's it's this is from science itself. This is from nature uh, and relations of this. You know, like, oh, sorry, the Journal of Human Evolution, Volume One Forty Nine, December Twenty Twenty, uh, December Twenty Twenty. There you go. Um, based on our uh, based on our uh, analysis, the TM two six six partial femur lacks any feature consistent with uh, with uh, with a uh, with walking upright basically um uh instead it's it's morphology instead uh it's morphology suggests it derived from an ape it came from an ape so and that's coming straight out of nature so there you go and and erica still gets up there and if i go back again did we did we see the the actual bones yeah there they are okay so here's the bones and 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 i think beside here is human bone and on here is uh, is is the is the one that they found. This is ape. This the one on the right. The long bones on the right is ape, and that's the human on the left. I think I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So that's why they're saying that this is basically a. And if you look up above that, you see that that's the a, a, a cutaway view, a side view um, of the bone, a cutaway. And you can see it's 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 more uh, sort of oval shaped. That that says that it's a it's an ape. And the way it's more curved here, that says that it's an ape. So basically, they found ape bones fossilized, and they said they basically just called it a human. So this is why they're now something coming out and saying that they don't believe that it's uh, yeah they don't believe. Let me get back to where I was so I don't get muddled up. There we go. So <clears throat> they don't believe that it's um, actually. I should just sit on that uh, that picture. There you go. Yeah, they don't believe that it's a, it was a bipedal upright walker or anything like that. But yeah, it's pretty uh, interesting when you think about it. Like it, it, this, and then Erica still comes out and say, says try to, to defend this and tries to still call it a hominid, even though you know you got these uh journal of human evolution coming out and saying that it's they don't believe that it is and then erica's coming out and disagreeing with them online and she's got and she's got what is it hundreds of thousands of followers now oh yeah i oh, mean it's terrible you know, it's not the only time evidence, that, I've, that we've caught her doing that, YouTube that. pushes pushes rubbish um sure. for evolutionists but but screws us over it's uh, it's just outright mate it's, it's it's like how does someone with that sort of like with the mentality of a i don't know of a child a two-year-old child um come out and try to argue that these bones are are from uh, an upright walking bipedal creature when they're quite clearly from a knuckle walker from a, you know what i mean like a, a walker one that walks on all fours so it's just clear as clear as crystal and and she comes out and, and argues against it and i've seen her argue against it i don't know if she's changed her mind since then but it's pretty funny yeah she does yeah. i just wanted to add to that uh, additionally and interjectively that erica uh guts that given has claimed other things that are not it coinciding with the paleoanthropological view the paleoanthropological community uh, in a, as a whole for once she claims that the Prometheus, the SCW 573, that little foot that we were looking at earlier, the most complete yet mangled and deteriorated by the flow of water and stuff in that cave in Sturfentine. Um, she claims that that's an Africanus when the founders themselves claim that it's Prometheus, which is different than the Africanus. And, and the reason yeah. that they believe that is the differences in the skull, because Africanus has a chimpanzee skull where the Prometheus, as we just showed you, has some very gorilla characteristics, which set it apart from the from the uh, Africanus that Erica's claiming it is. So, 
Sorry, those noises you can hear around here is my dog licking and slurping and breathing. That's not <laughs> me going, because <laughs> if anybody heard my dog, they'd think I was dying. Oh, Joe, you poor Jason, going on over there. dying. <laughs> Listen to his breathing. Yeah, like, no, that's not me. That's, that's the dog. And it's licking, licking and gulping and slurping and farting and burping and breathing heavy. And so you hear all weird noises. It's uh, drinking. and yeah, it's, it's not me. Yeah, just All right, point thing. taken. All Disclaimer. right, so <laughs> they claim that this was some kind of australopithecine, and now they're claiming that it belongs to the pan line. Is the is the idea here? Actually, if it was evolutionist, it wouldn't be poor Jason. It would be it would it would be it, it would be it would be oh great, Jason's dying. Oh damn it, it's not him dying. Fuck it. Anyway, he was probably they were probably sitting there. <laughs> Hoping that I was dying, and I was dying, and now that I'm not, they would be gone. Yeah, I'm out of here. If he's not dying, I'm out of here. Basically, <laughs> that's what evolutionists want for me. Anyway. Well, I'm hoping the best for you and your dogs, man. <clears throat> okay, sorry, I shouldn't cut you off. I apologize. No, no, no. You're going on about the the chadensis here. I was just wondering if uh, if this is what they claimed was bipedal, and then realized that it was actually an arboreal ape or a tree dwelling ape uh yes yes that's that's what it said it, it it literally says uh right here it says um yeah it says it, it says here um in this is um this is the journal of human evolution going against uh basically they suggest uh and the hum it, it said uh researchers disagree with the earlier claims um, uh, by the discoverer that S. Uh, Tadensis, whatever, I'm just going to say Tadensis, uh, Tadensis was neither a human ancestor nor could it have even walked upright. So, yeah, they did claim originally that it walked upright. <laughs> and look at, its, wow. look at its grubby, look at its head. Look at it, look at that <laughs> face, mate. Look at I mean, that, come on. That thing walking yeah. upright, all. Oh, Claiming a case for bipedal, uh, bipedally based on an incomplete femur is dubious at best, and it actually mm -hmm. uh, matches a primate, and it does. And and that's you're looking at the the femurs there, the primate femurs and human femurs. I think <laughs> I'm not sure. I can't remember which which one. But anyway, so a partial femur lacks a, a feature consistent with the regular bouts of a terrestrial bipedal travel. So basically what they're saying here, this is from the Journal of Human Evolution, uh, uh, Volume 149, December 2020. Uh, so, and then it says, uh, if the femur lacks any feature consistent with regular bouts of terrestrial bipedal travel, which means the femur lacks any... Um, anything showing that it could ever have walked upright is that's what they said that's exactly what they just said but that's translated from you know gobbledygook to what people can understand and then it says here it's gross morphology suggests a, a, a derived pan like um bull bull bullplan or whatever i can't pronounce that word b-a-u-p-l-a-n bullplan bow plan I don't know. Anyway, uh, like bow plan, uh, body plan. So it's it's basically what they're saying. Morphology suggests a, a derived pan, uh, like that means basically the morphology suggests it's an ape and nothing more. That it's just a knuckle walker. That it never. What they're saying there, that translated is they both just said exactly this. They said that that thing has never walked in bipedal bipedally from their examination of the femur bone ever. Wow. And that's coming from the Journal of Human Evolution, that it was always knuckle walker, that they just basically just said that right there. They and, misinterpreted that. Uh, yeah. So, and then you got people like Erica coming out and doing videos and constantly saying that um, things about that, that she believes that that is still in the, you know, a bipedal walker or whatever. And, and arguing against it. I don't know if she changed, like I said this before as well, I don't know if she changed her position on that later down the track, but I'm going way back, way I hope back. she does now. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Because it so is basically just... it, it migrated, right? It migrated from the royal blue of the Australopithecine line 
to the purple of the pan line just because they misinterpreted this thing. And that's what happens when you're guessing and not doing any actual science. <laughs> All right, so you're going to guess bipedalism. They're going to claim bipedalism, and they don't even have a really complete skull because they have this jigsaw puzzle they put together here. Uh, they manufactured to look any way that they want to. Uh, and they had just enough leg bones to prove that it actually lived in the trees. Or was or were these um, shoulder and arm bones that they had? Where they discovered that it was a tree dweller. You still with me, Jason? Because that kind of looks like some some arm bones. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, gorilla. Gorilla-like. Hmm. Oh, there's another gorilla involved. And it looks like arm bones. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, when you find these bones and realize that these things are still swinging from the trees, I guess that's one reason to claim it's not bipedal. when the pectoral gait is of a tree-dwelling ape and not a, uh, what would be a missing link, then you can't really have it in the missing link group, you know? That's so. funny as. Have a, have a look at that, the picture behind it. Uh, sure. Uh, look at that. <laughs> it, it, that's funny as. Uh, look, there you go. There's a gorilla. The, the, the Salanthrus tocopetus, gorilla-like. <laughs> It's gorilla like. It is a bloody it's very gorilla. Gorilla. <laughs> gorilla. Anyway, so that's why. That's why. Um... Now, here's the thing. Why are they putting it in the pan group if it's gorilla like? You know what I mean? Like, if they're finding out that parts of this thing are more gorilla like, wouldn't they put it in the gorilla leaning? Here we go. Group and not Look at the, the pan. pan. Here we go. He's the ones that they say are pan, right? Now there's, and then and then there's a lineup, and and we know that the um, uh, what was it again? What was the the, the designation? The number? Oh, there's AL. Oh, AL five is missing. <laughs> AL four four three eight one is missing. Uh, hmm. yeah. So, but here we go. So you you've got the Australopithecine this. one just isn't there. There it is. Two six six TM two six six. The TM266 is supposed to be the one that walks bipedally and um, and and F, Pan, uh, what's that called? Um, it's called Pan Paniscus, Paniscus, F, Pan Paniscus F or whatever. Pan Paniscus hmm. is, is, is a pan because pan means gorilla. Remember that? It means ape, basically, pan ape. Well, chimpanzee. So or someone like Peter Pan, calling Peter Pan is like calling him Peter Ape. <laughs> right, well, it's, it's chimpanzee. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the chimpanzee, you know. Oh, Pan, yeah, yeah, I know, but yeah. ape, basically, it means ape, you know, because a pan, sure. a chimpanzee is an ape. But anyway, sure. it's just funny, Peter Ape or Peter Chimp, chim Chimpanzee. Uh, anyway. Uh, it's easy uh, to remember that way. So, so you got the pan, you got these pan ones here, which they admit are just apes, and then you go over to here to... TM266, and then you've got the, it's, there it is. It's just, a, and it's more worn away. See, I was talking about before about how the bones get worn away and stuff like that. So it's a little bit chipped away at the top, and it's sort of like it's got these little breaks in it and stuff. But even though they've put it together, they've they've tried to, I don't know, they've probably tried to put this to me because it's got these breaks here. They would have got it in pieces, and I reckon they've put it together in a way where it's not as curved as say the, the the gorilla bone here i would say that that is just a gorilla bone maybe a young gorilla not too young because their bones tend to change shape as they grow older but you know younger or maybe a smaller female or maybe a, a whatever but that is definitely that tm266 where they're saying it's an upright walker uh, is just ridiculous. Absolutely, it's two back too. It's 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 as well. It's it's two back as well. 
So, like, I mean, it's not even it, – they're just like, – look at these other ones, OH36 and, 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 and L40, but especially the, the TM266 compared to any one of those pans could fit any one of them because it's degraded. Right from from it's chipped away and bits broken off, just like we saw on the femur. Oh, sorry, on the um the the sacrum, the Lucy sacrum at the bottom where the two holes are clearly were before with the sides broken off, basically. And you've just basically got a full eight femur bone here that they've put together to match whatever they want to match, and a story that they want to match. Because look at it. I mean, this is just. I mean, they're saying that they they know this stuff. They don't know any of this. A lot of these bones that they've put together, these eight bones, and they're saying it's pan paniscus and and pan uh, troglodytes, pan troglodytes, which is troglodyte just means ape, right? Just the troglodyte is an ape, isn't it? Or isn't it? Or tr- uh, an ape? It's kind of a derogatory term in a way too, I think. <clears throat> yeah, but it is. But it's not like in scientific terms here. It's called pan troglodytes. M. Pan sure. troglodyte M. So troglodyte basically just means ape or, or, or something like that, or I think, I'm pretty sure. So you've, it, that's not an insult. It's not just an insult. It's actually a scientific term that means ape. So you've got pan troglodyte here. You've got the different types of pan. You've got gorilla, uh, begin, begini or whatever. And then you've got the, the, the today's gorilla. Well, I mean, they always make this look bigger, but I would like to see in real life compared to a, a say a gorilla of say a younger age or a female with a smaller bones or something um compared to that they want to put the biggest bone they can there to sort of outmatch the other ones they don't want to try and match it with a younger gorilla or a female or so or whatever or whatever you know what i mean because if they did that people would go well look that's exactly the same it's just chipped off but and that's all it is it's just these things are just deformed and chipped and broken and you know and 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 or different species of ape you know what i mean and and then this stuff here i would like to see this bone this homo uh homo sapien oh sorry that is homo human i was gonna say i was gonna say because that looks very human but it is it's homo sapiens so that's human <laughs> but you know you got the progression from human homo sapien all the way over you know with all the imagined um stuff in between all the way over to gorilla so you got goes from human to gorilla with, but in between it's got you know, the 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 different sort of apes. That's just they're just all ape bones, and and I'd like I'd like to see these ones here, these pan paniscus or whatever, if they've found that in a fossil version and then just made a that looks to me like they've made a a a, 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 a you know an artist rendition of what they reckon it would look like. Probably found you know, little bits and pieces of the top bone here, or maybe that's an ape that lives today. I don't know. Uh, so I don't know enough about this to, to really, so I don't want to say well, hard and fast one way or the other. But you can just see that this is all 100% rubbish and lies and just made up crap. I mean, it's just utter rubbish. Look at that. You've got this, that two that TM266 is just an ape. It's just ape. It's just a degraded, you know, deformed broken apart you know it's, i can't believe people think it's anything else it just takes a lot of imagination you need to be a have a good imagination to be an evolutionist adult fairy tales i suppose you busy see science oh yeah i agree man it's it's absolutely like the whole uh human evolution narrative is just made up yeah and it's guesswork you know it's it's i mean they're connecting pieces of evidence that shouldn't necessarily be connected uh creating a story out of it uh i would like to address the chat here though too uh robin uh says erica is getting her phd in primatology how many years uh, yeah. of study do you have in the subject and to that i say uh that i can be right about erica being wrong about paleoanthropology I just showed them without, without being evidence. and they're still arguing so hang, hang on hang on sorry man. i was gonna say yeah i can be right about erica being wrong about paleoanthropology without being a professional paleoanthropologist so that's what i have to say 
Yeah, no, no, and in just, fact, I, I in fact, I think I did that tonight. I proved that Erica is wrong, and yeah. he he did too. Because I mean, if she's really claiming, I mean, if we do really have her claiming Whoa. that this pan group individual ended up being a our real ape is still an australopithecine probably because of the lack of evidence that they have for australopithecine so that's what those erica is grasping at straws you know for evidence that just isn't there so yeah i just proved it. the tm266 on there is just an ape it's not anything bipedal walking at all you can see it as clear as day there's the actual photo of what they found and then look across at the apes right and then you just tell me that wasn't a smaller ape with and that that's been degraded you can see if you look closely at that photo they they're showing the, the parts of the bone that are broken away they're not even trying to cover that up by the way that's one thing i did notice they're not even trying to hide that so if that's actually in that photo in the detail if you look in they're showing that, that it's literally just broken away and and, and bone and it's not a different uh, species or shape or anything. I mean, they're going to say that it's slightly different angled and, and all this sort of stuff. But like we were talking about before, you've got the, it's it's so simple. You've got the um, all that weight on top of it. I mean, these, these fossils, before they were eroded away where they could find them, you know, down to where they, <laughs> like they say, were under hundreds or millions of tons, I should say, of, uh, of pressure. So, you know, to, to say that it's just a slightly different shape, that it must have come from a different thing, is just folly, as far as I'm concerned. It's ridiculous. It, it, it's, it, the, the, any one of those bones uh, in the so-called upright walkers have been in under massive amounts of pressure and to deform them. And also they were, they were chipped out of the rock matrix, you've got to remember, often by these people. And as they're chipping it out, they're, you know, they could take a bit of artistic license there, which which Johansson's done and other people have done, and then and we know about that. So, you know, and that's what they do. They do it often. We know it from from other hominid skulls where they're putting them together in the wrong articulate. Oh, what do they what did he call it? Oh, that that dentist. They're they're deliberately putting them together wrong. And he's an uh, an ornith what well, not an ornithologist, an orthodontist. And he needs to know the way jaws and teeth go together because if he doesn't and he does work on you, it might work at the time, but years down the track when your skull changes shape, as it always does in every single person, that it might cause you more harm down the track than good. So they need to know uh, which way the skull is put together, how it changes over time and stuff like that to predict what the work they're doing now down the track, if it will cause you problems. So he knows how to put them together. So he went in and he got the pieces, obviously, because he had access to these things, and he put them together in, in the right occlusion. That's it. And he said, if I don't know how to put a, a jaw together or teeth together in the right occlusion, um, then I, I would make a terrible uh, orthodontist. Uh, because, like I said before, about you know they need to know the way bones grow and change shape, and everyone's bones grow all the time in their head, so they need to know all this sort of stuff. And uh, he put it together, and when he put it together, it looked just like hu more human-like, more human-like. He said, whereas they, when they put it together, they put it together slightly, so it would just in you know putting it out a little bit on each one to just to get to the shape that they wanted and when he put it together properly the way it should be like an author with as an orthodontist uh, and, and it came out you know looking like a, a human jaw and he was an atheist and he changed uh because of things like that and he was and he said he was actually in the room once when they were actually shaping uh grinding off a part of a jaw to put it into a thing so i mean we've got all this we've got so much evidence and circumstantial evidence right a lot of circumstantial evidence and a lot of and people get convicted and sent to prison and put to the death penalty on circumstantial evidence by the way people so there's a lot of people that have been convicted of the death and given the death penalty on circumstantial evidence so when i say circumstantial it doesn't mean you know so you have literally got all of this um, circumstantial evidence saying that they deform things and, and stuff. So those bones that you can see, those femur bones, they are just 100% could be a, a million different reasons why they like they are, or a lot, or a hundred different reasons I could think off the top of my head. You know what I mean? And many more. 
it's crazy how many things all the weight on top of them you know like it's 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 they've been deformed in the ground when they found them they were in pieces you know they even admit that there's bits chopped chip, chipped off the side where that uh, where that bone sticks out that bump on the top and, and stuff that they're showing that it's been chipped off and people want to you know say because it's a slightly different shape it must be in a different line and they get all these different bones and line them up to what they want and we don't even know if they've deformed them or when they've chipped the bone matrix sorry the rock matrix away um from the fossil if they haven't just you know used a bit of artistic license to push their worldview as well so there's lots sure. of different reasons and people that, that and these, say, these of course are the ulnae which is your forearm bones i think so uh, yeah. what it was is they were going by the upper the the arm bones to to judge that they were still arboreal uh, apes so they're still living in the trees because they still had ape arms basically this is the paper so right yes it's it's they're, they're going from human on the far left the furthest left one is a human um a modern human a homo sapien and on the far right it's it's a gorilla there's, there's a gorilla one right but the ones sure. in the middle they're, they're smaller but they could be smaller because it was a younger ape they could be a different shape as well because they're a younger ape and as apes grow you should see the facial bones in an ape when an ape is like just out of the out of the womb its skull looks very human like it's actually creepy if you look at a, a young for newborn ape skull it's creepy it's almost like looking at a human skull it's so creepy and and then as it grows that skull changes dramatically so i'd imagine when they're younger that that's another thing i didn't think of i'd imagine when they're younger they 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 might have have a different shape in the femur too like the skull changes so massively sure. and dramatically from like a human looking skull to this great big jutted out thing with and, and even human looking teeth to these great big jutted out jaws you know with massive big canines and, and stuff so if it changes that much i'd imagine that it's possible i don't know this for sure because i don't know enough about these i'm not a scientist that, that know about this but i'd imagine that they're younger that that's possible that the femur might change as well as it grows i mean because they do you look at their legs when they're young they're more straight right and then as they and, and and i'd imagine that the socket would be a different shape too and as it grew and developed and the bones hardened and thickened it would probably change shape i'm just i i because the skull changes so dramatically i mean it, it just it looks like a different species if you got a, a a newborn ape skull and put it up against a full-blown adult male skull and just went whoa how did that turn into that you know what i mean so there's another positive explanation there's so many explanations so to put these things up and and say that they, they're just getting bones out of the ground and lining them up to to fit their worldview and that's exactly what they're doing and that's all they're doing i agree i mean what they're doing is they're using the little known uh differences between the sexes the genders uh ages and populations of species okay and these slight differences they're using to claim evolution from or some kind of transition well it's really just a trick of logic for instance here you have the only and like you said there's no reason to believe that those aren't younger uh apes right which would be why they're smaller or you know and then there's differences between the genders or sexes of the uh, of the apes, and then populations because there's different populations of chimpanzees, you know, and they all have different shaped bones as a whole. So, but yeah, I mean that's about I have to add about that. I'm here. I'm here. I'm still alive. All the atheists go nuts. He's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> He did a dive a heart attack. Ah, better luck next time, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna find a video for us to watch. I mean, if we can't get someone in here to chat with, I don't know. I will be right yeah. back. What do you uh what do you say? What do you what do you uh what do you what kind of topic do you want to go into? Just more of this or no, more paleoanthropology? Come on, I suppose. All right. 
Well, I've got a video of Erica watching, <laughs> uh, reading the Contested Bones book. We could watch that. Okay. Since we've already talked about Erica tonight, we can stay on that topic. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll be right back with that. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that uh, is basically what I'm saying with this pan thing. It's it's just, they're just pan means ape or chimp. Uh, and all the different shapes don't mean a thing. They don't mean a thing. As apes grow, they're, they're, their skull changes so dramatically that goes from basically, it just looks like a human skull. If you get a, a newborn or a, a newborn ape skull and put it against the adult, you'll you'll think that how is that even the same kind you know like they say there's different kinds like there's different species within the one kind right well how how would you you would even you would even say that that's not even the same kind it's completely different and yet that that human looking skull and very human looking and if you look at the teeth too it's it's just spooky how how much a, a newborn infant an infant uh, ape skull looks human so and you had apes and they admit that millions of years ago we had these uh, these orangutans that were 12 foot tall and i show in one of my docs and and an, an orangutan infant skull right which looks very very human and then i show uh, a full-grown orangutan skull and it just doesn't even look like the same creature it looks like a different creature altogether and completely different and 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 so you got this this tiny this little so imagine if you had which they did have you've got these um 12 foot tall orangutans in the past and they talk they admit this right so these things were 12 foot tall can you imagine how big their newborn infants would be if they're 12 foot tall right so the skull that infant skull that infant um ape skull uh would be so human like and it would be large because it's a 12 foot tall ape giving birth to a to an infant it, it would be the infant skull would be so large. so can you imagine if they found that skull in its complete form in the fossil record now go and have a look everyone at some point at your own leisure just go and type in infant uh gorilla skull infant chimpanzee skull and then adult chimpanzee skull and have a look at the difference and, and and see for yourself and you will just not even believe it's the same kind let alone the same a, a, a same a, 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 within the same species you'll think it's a completely different kind and and yet uh, that changes that much so you've got these back to these bones these femur bones i mean they could be from who knows if the femur <clears> bone changes they grow anyway oh, Mac. Mac, you got something to say <laughs> the their forearm bones yeah yep. they're the on the on there yeah oh yeah but yeah i was yeah. gonna say yeah you're absolutely right i mean they're using uh like these differences and ages of these animals and the changes like especially like in, in when you see the chimpanzee as they become adults in the males you see the crown forming and the skull com becomes completely different and has yeah, there's no crown shaped. there at all in yeah in when the, they're in, young yeah oh it just it looks human it's creepy sure. when you look at these skulls it's just creepy you think you're looking at some sort of de slightly deformed human sure oh, and have a look at a fetus have a look at a fetus a chimpanzee fetus skull it's so it's actually even more human looking it's crazy. So now the yeah, evolutionists right. are going to come out. See, that's proof. We came from apes and we're, we're, we're there. And you have a lot. <laughs> and you make me think of these juvenile skulls that they have they in their collection. You know what I mean? And they're using them as some kind of, like, to prove transition. And you're seeing more like these human, more human features on them. It could just be that they're juvenile ape skulls. You know, that's pretty interesting. Or chimp skulls, you know, that's pretty interesting. So that'd be something to look at too. Oh yeah, man, it, it, it's definite. I mean, we know we don't think when they don't think there was twelve foot tall uh, orangutans around. They don't call it orangutan, of course. They call it a different name. I'll find it later. I can't be bothered now. People can look this stuff up. 
but it was like a, a nine to 12 foot tall eight. And if you've got nine foot tall ones, you know you're going to have the freaks, the 12 foot tall ones. So imagine a 12 foot tall female ape giving birth to a child or say dying, right? And the fetus skull would be huge if it was almost like, you know, before just before it was born or maybe a month before it was born, the skull would be fully formed. And that skull, I can tell you right now, would be quite large. And if it was found in the fossil record, mate, they would be like making up all sorts of fairy tales, mate. They'd be going, this is definitely, see, this is, and they'd put it in their little line up. They'd, they'd move all the skulls around and go, oh, this one must go here, you know, right? <laughs> with their imaginations. So it, it's it's literally uh, that, that people can look at this for themselves. It's all over the internet. There's thousands and thousands of photos of uh, fetus skulls, um, or not even photos, just like replicas, which are identical replicas, I should say. So you got identical replica photos out there of the fetus skulls. Go and have a look. It'll just blow your drawer. Will jo your jaw draw your drawer? I said it's like a, anyway. Your your jaw will drop, and um, and and when you see the how human like it is, it's just creepy, mate. You got this ape with this, and then look at a side on view. Of, of it when it's a fetus or a newborn and a newborn and then also line up next to that a full-grown adult skull side on or put them all side on and you'll just look at it and go oh man how's that even the same creature and it's amazing how much it changes so you you literally have bone changes they grow in the femurs too I, i'd imagine they would i don't know for sure a oh, gigantopithecus that's it yeah that's right robin webster Oh, sure. Yeah. I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah, Gigantopithecus. So, yeah, you can just look up Gigantopithecus and see how tall they say the biggest one would have been and then imagine what that fetus would look like before it was born, say a month before it's born, a month before birth, like on the trimester, whatever it is, or whatever trimester that, I don't know what how long they are, they are pregnant or whatever. But yeah, or even the juvenile, like even the juvenile would look like an adult um, chimpanzee. Oh well, a juvenile, yeah. a juvenile start this. Their face is starting to grow out a little bit, but no, they still sure. look very human. And as they grow, they they get all these different facial. The face juts out to different, as you imagine, right? That as they start off, the front part of the face is flat where the jaw is. It's in line with, say, almost in line with the with the with the uh, forehead right and as it grows the jaw juts out like like it goes from being in line if you run your hand down from your forehead to your jaw your jaw is pretty much in line with your forehead but that's a similar with a, a juvenile ape and as it grows it just juts out more and more and more so you've got these different hominids with their jaws jutting out to different um amounts and they're sure. well, it could just be uh, it could be different it could be this some of them could be the same ape but different uh stages of growth and if you've got 12 foot tall apes you know and 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 they're, of course they're going to try to put them in a different time period those 12 foot tall apes because i'll say oh so that couldn't be this because we imagine that they came from this time period you know what i mean or they would have found them in a layer where they could have reclassified the age of the layer or or something but you'll never hear about that that they reclassified it they'll bury all that and you'll just see that we found this in this layer and that's how old it is so it couldn't possibly be this yes it could be if there was apes around back um back way back when they're around back when before lucy as well giant apes and if giant apes are given birth you're going to get all of these different skulls so there's that's in the Jason theory, what I call the Jason theory, the retarded theory, we should call it. The evolutionists would say, oh, the retarded theory. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. so that's, that's not well, Like you were saying theory. about the prognathism or the oh. jutting out of the jaw here. I mean, that's why this comparison is so compelling between the gorilla skull and the STW 573 skull, the Littlefoot skull. I mean, it has even the jutting out of, of the jaw is the same, you know? It's just such a great match. I'm really proud of that one. So let's get that out there. I mean, you know, and that you know, like you were saying, the jutting out of the jaw is different between the different apes, and definitely between humans and apes. I mean, there's quite a bit of difference there. So. Yeah, but go, I'll see if I hang on. Let me let me go. Let me pull up my doc. Oh, and I'll that video my... that video uh, is in the chat in the private chat. So. Okay. I'll put a minute on it. 
after of, after we cover this, we can get into no, that. Uh, if they if they comment a bit more in the private chat, we get to know who they are. Because I'm not having them. Anyhow. Oh, what was I looking up again? What was I going to look up? Um, oh, I can't remember. I've got so many. Well, I've forgotten. Up. I've forgotten. Uh, but I yeah. put that uh, video of Erica reading the Contested Bones book. Hang on. I'll in, find it. In I'll the find it. Wait, so. Whenever you're ready for that. I mean, we can. But yeah, I mean, these, these bones here in front of us, I mean, if you're still viewing what I'm viewing, these are the ulna, which are the forearm bones. And they basically realize that these bones match perfectly with a tree-dwelling ape. So they weren't Australopithecine. So that's why they got reinterpreted and reclassified into a different species altogether. And that just goes to show you that the paleoanthropology and the uh, these discoveries are probably not what they're claimed to be. I mean, if the story around them surrounding them changes all the time, it just shows that it's based on guesswork. The Jason okay. theory. That's it. The retarded yeah. theory. That's it. Exactly. What the evolutionists would call the retarded theory. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> theories. Uh, Jason, where where do one legged and oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. All right. Okay. Hey, I'll I'll, I'll put up the, the the for the evolutionists. I'll put up the retarded theory, Jason theory. Uh, <laughs> we got to give them a little bit of. Uh, All right. Give them something. Anyway. All right. So here we go. <laughs> oh, Matt presents. It's it's, it's good. young Earth creation now. That's how old this is. That's how old this is. This is okay. So here we go. Uh, let's get down to the ape skulls because it's easy to find. We just keep. Oh, look at that! Look at that! I just want to show you how much the and I remember this. The bull terriers. If you look at the old. Oh, anyway, let's not get into it. Right. Let's just get over the skull before I forget. You know, Joe Biden. Bro. I mean, all right, we got uh, uh, yeah. oh yeah, there's a perfect example. Now we've got to, we've got to look at this. This is just too funny. Oops, look, this creature's still actually alive today. So that I don't think they even know <laughs> if they call it a living fossil or not. But this is actually alive today, and 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 this is the evidence they've got for these two bone fragments here and here is the evidence for this, and it's it's in the human law ancestral line sort of thing. It's so fucking hilarious. I just, uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, their whole story is ridiculous. I, mean, I just seen you know, a discover a girl whose parents were two different species. <laughs> two different species. <laughs> and it's, it, it, they just anyway. Oh man, it's it's it, you read it and you just say something <laughs> like, oh, "We found Neanderthal and Denisovan." Uh, DNA in a yeah, it's funny that you do find both of them in there considering they're both the same thing and and that they're just human, but anyway, sure. it's it's it, I'm surprised, I'm so shocked that, that they find it here. Let's get down to these guys. Oh, look, there's uh, there's Johansson and his fakery, there's the hillside he dug it out. There you go, there's a human foot they found in there and called it an eight foot. There you go, people. There's the human picture on the right and on the left, sure. there's the so called hominid Homo habilis. Homo habilis with a human foot. There you go. And your habilis is one of, like the earliest, the earliest claim. Oh, look at that. There uh, you go. There you go. You. Here we go. These are off lost Australopithecus afarensis. Ooh, now that, that yeah. is, is a bone. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> that. That's just a human bone. It's outright here, and you can see it like it's <laughs> yeah. So all these habilis are gonna look very human because you know these are the very first human remains um and and oh, oh, what you have thing. here with the habilis and some of the early habilis is you have a situation where they're finding them in, in hadar like the same place where they're finding lucy uh maybe not on the same hillside maybe not at the same levels but in the same Look place so you have these things right. dating back you know right. three million thing. three million years or something 2.2 2 million years 
for the home of yeah. Billis. Oh, are you showing what I'm showing? Look at it. Look at this. Look, look. Just have a quick, quick look at this. This is supposed to be three different creatures, right? Um, the the uh, the pack. Pachycephalosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, and I can say I can I can pronounce that, but not the other one. Anyway, Pachycephalosaurus or whatever. <laughs> Pac, a Pachy, Pachy, Pachy. It's a Pachy, a Pakistani, Pakistani cephalosaurus. Anyway, so we've got Pachycephalosaurus and Stiggy Stigm Stigmolock, 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 Stigmolock. Anyway, and 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 drag Draco uh, Dracorex, Dracorex, and so we've got these three different species, right? But have a guess what? They're the same freaking. They're the same species at different growth cycles. You know, like the chimp skull that we showed. See those? They're the three supposedly the three different ones. But if you go, I think we've got here. Here we go. See, as it grows, the, the it changes the the skull the the the. The spines get absorbed little bit by little bit because see how it's slowly getting older there. On the on the left, it's really young. On the far left, in the middle, it's 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 starting to grow older. And then the, on the far right, so there's evidence and that it's basically the same creature, but its skull just changes like the ape sort of thing. So they've one that they've named three different species in the one thing. So let's get down to the let's get down to these. Uh, see, look, there's all the evidence. Like it's so. I've even got cross sections of the bone and, and and showing that like they say because the bone's more aerated, um, that on one of the skulls that and it's that it's different, the other one's more solid. But the problem with that is when they're young, when reptiles are young, often you'll get this aerated bone when they're young and, and as they grow and the bones sort of, sort of harden and mineralize, it, it, it mineralizes and changes uh, uh, quite a bit. And if it's changing from what it was before to that adult version, it changes so dramatically, then you're going to get a massive amount of change within the bone itself. So that just doesn't hold water. There's lots of different explanations for that, but that's just one of them. Stigimaloc. Stigimaloc. Uh, the spongy bone uh, inside shows the Draco X uh, is uh, the young, fast-growing dinosaur. There you go. So that's, that's basically they've just got that. And as they grow... They just change from that into that, just like the ape skull changes. And we do see these sort of things in in, in reptiles and, and creatures today. So here we go. Here we go. Now, look at that. These are ape skulls. Look, look at that chimpanzee fetal skull, the one on the second row, second from the right. That's a, that's a fetal skull, a chimpanzee fetal skull. And then look at on the on the... <laughs> on the right that you wouldn't even say that's the same freaking creature would you and here we go here's an infant here's an infant skull the next one over so you got three over from the right on the second row you got the infant skull and then you got the orangutan uh infant skull and 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 if you look at an orangutan fetus i mean look at that orangutan infant skull i mean look at it you, you can just see them claiming oh this hominid look at the and they say that the teeth are different but but it's got different teeth, they say, on those hominid skulls. Well, if you had a 12-foot-tall creature giving uh, birth to, you know, even if it died, say, with the baby uh, just a month before birth and, and, the, and this 12-foot-tall ape dies and that skull gets preserved somehow, but all the rest of the ape just gets, you know, broken up or eaten or dragged away, but that skull somehow gets buried and, and survives. So like, you know, the, I'm just going in the evolutionist view. And, and... And, 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 of course, what they're going to say is they're going to line that up in a line This because it's it's a giant ape fetus skull. It will be quite large, right, the, the skull. It won't be tiny like you'd imagine an ape skull today to be a fetus ape skull. It would be tiny. It'd be quite, you know, it'd be quite large. So, and then they just line them up where they want. And then you've got the different stages of growth here. And and as they grow, they change so dramatically. It's it's just scary. I mean, you have got a five year old uh, archaic human, or <laughs> whatever, a uh, three year old uh, human child. See, look at the difference in the human skulls here. You got a fourteen month old. You got on the on the right. You've got a a a, a, a one and a half year old uh, child skull, 
And then uh, further over, you've got a 14 month old child skull in the bottom row. And then further over again, you've got the, the uh, three year old child skull, and then a five year old child skull, and then a 12 year old child skull. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. Look at the, even the human skull, how much it changes. I mean, it's crazy. And then look at the, and then look above up here on the, on the uh, chimpanzee fetal skull and look at the, the, the gorilla infant skull. And it's 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 this middle row, uh, third over. It, 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 that that is just it's it's just scary, man. I mean, you got the chimpanzee fetal skull. Can you imagine if if you had a giant um, chimpanzee? Say you back in the day that the creatures were larger. So you had a like you got a twelve foot tall orangutan, uh, giant Gigantopithecus, uh, which is their twelve foot tall orangutan. Uh, so imagine, like you'd imagine, the chimps would have been bigger. Like we've got chimps today, where there's a there's a subspecies of chimp that's so huge and violent, it just kills all other chimp tribes that come anywhere near it. Like really violent. And uh, so you can imagine back in the day before you know they were hunted to because like hunting animals actually reduces their size when they're regularly hunted. And the more they're hunted, the more their size reduces. I know this from myself from seeing kangaroos over the decades and hearing stories from people from 80 years ago and stuff like that. So you've got this giant creature back then uh, giving birth, a giant, say, chimp-looking creature, and it gives birth, uh, j just say it's say it's five times bigger than the chimps a day or, or even seven times bigger, the massive thing. And and or say five times. Let's just say five. To, to the, and did, you can imagine how big that fetus skull would be. That fetus skull would be gigantic, absolutely massive. So and then if you got that skull, if they got that skull, right, that chimpanzee skull, say that that was in a giant chimpanzee, like say the giant Antipithecus version of a chimpanzee. And then we don't know that it was a orangutan-looking thing too. They only say that it's a orangutan. It could have been a freaking chimp for all we know, Gigantopithecus. So just because they say the artist impression of it was so, made it look like a an orangutan, I, I believe that it could have. Anyway, so an adult, some adult chimp or some giant chimp could have been. So we don't know what their, their fetuses look like on the Gigantopithecus. I mean, we're only going on artist impressions of what they think it looked like, right, that, that ape. So here we go. We've got this this thing here. So you can imagine if it had a skull that looked anything like the chimpanzee fetal skull, and they found that in the fossil record, what sort of stories would they tell? In the second row, second from the right, they would. Yeah, it would be hilarious to to see the stories. I mean, they've got skulls like this, haven't they? In the similar sort of things to these. So and you got the different stages of growth of of life. I mean, you've got that. Look at the adult on the in the middle on the far left and then look at all the other skulls and the adult that's incredible difference that's just you wouldn't even think it was the same creature and you've got an adult male chimpanzee and on the right you've got a freaking fetus a chimpanzee fetal skull so yes um these skulls that they find in the fossil record are just imagination they're just finding extinct apes, apes and, and 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 humans and they're just lining them up in okay this one looks like it would have transitioned from this one and this one looks like it might have transitioned from that one so you got all these otters on earth you got different otters you got the small little miniature otters and then you got the middle size otters and the giant otters can you imagine if all otters were extinct today and they found all these different otter skulls like and then and their skull shapes are slightly different so they look like they're from a different species and all the different stages of growth they probably have different sort of skull shapes so they could literally just find so many different skull shapes within the ones within the same species because there's so much variation in the human uh sure. in, in humans as well like you got different rate different ethnic groups within the human group you got s dramatically different looking skulls so there's there'd be so many out there or there would have been so many in the past before they got destroyed in the flood or got destroyed over time as the evolutionists say that 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 finding these things is literally what they're doing is just finding these different shaped skulls and just lining them up in 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 whatever their imaginations uh you know tell them oh this one looks like it might have transitioned from that one just like the giant otters if they're all extinct today and all the otters and they found all the different skull shapes and sizes and stuff they line them up and say well this was the original otter this small one and then it evolved to this bigger one over here 
and that's exactly what they do it's there's no arguments there you can argue all you like but that's exactly what they're doing i mean not you i'm saying sea signs i'm just saying to the evolutionist and uh, yeah yeah and i mean i fully agree with you man especially about the gigantopithecus like if they found an infant or even a juvenile uh they would just claim that it's transitional and you know it's the size differences it's the differences in populations differences in sexes and differences in age uh these little known differences this dimorphism as it's called that they're using to claim transition so you ready to whack uh erica get down on this video or are we uh because i mean i feel like we got this point across pretty good i mean this yeah, is no, exactly no, what's no, going I, on I just, I just want to say i just want to say quickly before i go this just this picture sure. one picture we have a look at that <laughs> i mean it's can you imagine the stories i mean if they found a giant chimp baby skull and just you always get your freak freaks too in nature you know you get a dog that's just abnormally giant that's my dog drinking if you can hear that in the back you get a dog that's abnormally giant well you get apes and humans that are abnormally just big and you think whoa you know well you get that with apes too and if those humans had a baby the baby would be bigger so you'd imagine or apes giant that the baby would be larger so the skull the fetus was, would be larger and the and the baby chimp skulls would be larger because the creatures larger themselves so that's what they're doing. They're literally finding these things in the fossil record, and there it is. There's your there's your baby chimp skull compared to your adult chimp skull. They don't even look like the same creature. Could you they're imagine, little... like, a gorilla that's 12 feet tall, how strong that thing would be? Oh, oh I wouldn't even. <laughs> I mean... You flip over a semi, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, this is like, <laughs> if it was, yeah. Yeah, if it wasn't just from gigantism, like from a pituitary gland problem where they pump out too much growth hormone, but they were healthy and that big. Ooh. ooh. We found King Kong out there or something, man. Yeah. They've got oh, yeah, that thing, that, that something that big if it if it if it punched a T-Rex in the head and the T-Rex didn't get a good bite on it to begin with, then <laughs> it'd probably the T-Rex would probably stand there shaking its head for a few minutes after it got a punch, I reckon. Sure. <laughs> from a 12-tall ape. <laughs> I know someone's going to say, but the T-Rex weighed so many tons and that. No, the Antipithecus only weighed... You know, yeah, I know. Okay, I'm just sort of half joking there. Anyway, so let's put this video on. I'll get it. Sorry. <laughs> it might take about four hours for it to load with my wonderful, you know, high-tech. It's all good. It's all good. High-tech. Thousands of... But yeah, I mean, you know, just to rein, reinstate that point there is, you know, they use these small differences, the dimorphism between the the differences between sexes, uh, age, and populations of species to claim transition, to, to claim evolution has occurred. And they're using, uh, you know, this... They're using, they're basically, they're connecting pieces of evidence that shouldn't even be connected, at least in that way, and then adding a story to it, which is believable because the differences are there and they're seeable by anyone that will compare it. But the fact is, is there's differences between the species themselves. So it's just their uh, disingenuousness. And, and when you can go and make a comparison and find an exact match of something that's still around now to some of these transitional forms, it just goes to show you. I mean, it's obvious what's going on. Plus the lack of evidence. Like, they, they have 400 um, pieces of Australopithecus afarensis. They don't have 400 individuals, you know. They have a lot of teeth, a lot of finger bones. They claim belong to Afarensis. But Lucy is the most complete Afarensis find to date. There's also the uh, Dakika child, but that's mostly a um, vertebrae and part of a skull. So, yeah, the, the, the fossil record as far as these hypothetical missing links, they're called missing links for a reason. You know, they're still missing. Hasn't been a good one found yet. That's what I'd say. And they continue to be discredited. And like this baboon bone that was discovered in Lucy in 2015 by Gary Sawyer. 
the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Uh, when this discovery happened, you know, it's like people should question Lucy now because the story was that there was only one individual on the hillside and we just proved that there are two. So, so we're going to see what uh, uh, Erica has to say about this book that I have never read, but I promise someday I mean to read it. And yeah, I don't know. Let's make sure the bit rate's on and then I'm going to turn off my mic for it too. So, looks like it's set right. The afferensis bones are described as very ape-like. There are bones that appear to be distinctly different species that in fact belong in a different genus. These out of place bones were acknowledged to be present from, from the onset by Johansson and his co-workers in the field. And he goes on, they go on and on and on. This is the most shocking part of Lucy Discovery explained further. This explains why some of the bones of the The afferensis type have been described as remarkably human, while others have been described as strikingly similar to those of a chimpanzee. I put, here's your transitional on the side, right? Like, if something, this is the ape man, right? That ape woman that they've been asking for for since the dawn of time, since the dawn of creationism. They've been asking for a perfect ape man. And whenever they get it, nope, that can't be it. It's too transitional. It's actually just a mix of human and australopith bones. And, okay, well, you know, nothing nothing will ever be good, good enough. Those goalposts are on wheels and like, attached to a rocket, like a rocket powered engine to jettison it into the sun. Yeah, as you can see, the chimpanzee sacrum is far different. Now we're going to talk about the late holy foot. Yeah, go ahead. They start off this section by saying, Lucy's feet are missing, but some claim that she left human-like footprints. The some there, that's just... That's just the paleoanthropological community. These days, I don't know of anybody who proposes that the G-trackway at Laetoli was not made by Australopithecus afarensis. Um, you want to talk about Laetoli a little bit, Jason? Well, she says there that there's no one that claims that these footprints at Laetoli are human. Well, I do. So, And in fact, Mary Leakey, the one that discovered these footprints, uh, said in her original literature just how human they appeared. I mean, they had the human arch. They had the big toe. You know, everything a human has, a heel. There's no reason to believe that these footprints aren't human footprints other than their evolution narrative. Is that coming out clear? Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. I would have jumped in. Actually. Glad to hear it. So, yeah, I mean, we have some photos of the Laetoli footprint site 
here. I mean, these guys are digging it out. Now, this is site G of Lake Tole. And there's several pathways, obviously, because you have letter G. But if I remember, it goes all the way to O or P or something. So there's actually a few footprint sites. But these aren't all hominid footprints. And in fact, there's some bear prints and some what look like deer prints. Well, what they say yeah. are hominids. You mean these aren't all human footprints? This is one case where I'd like to see you call them human. This is oh, yeah, human. yeah. They're definitely this human. Is, this, is, this is not hominid. This is, this is just outright human tracks. I mean, I've walked, like I've said in other videos, I've walked through thousands of, of not thousands, hundreds of kilometres of, of mud hundreds of kilometers in my life literally i lived in a place where i had to cross through different areas in swamps and that through you know tidal swamps and other swamps and stuff through lots and lots of mud and wet mud and hard mud and so all different thicknesses and soft mud where i've almost been sucked under like quicksand and <laughs> there you go there you go there's a human foot that looks identical to the uh I mean, identical shape. That's that. That's a, a a a baby human or a or an infant or a or something foot or something like that. You may like a, a young child, two or three or one or whatever it is. So you can see the toe there. You can see the little toe off to the left. Uh, uh the the smaller toe, the middle toe. What you call? I suppose we call the middle toe. And then you got the uh, the the next. You know, you can see all the little toes there in that little yeah. foot beside his foot and that's exactly the same shape foot identical absolutely identical shape not size so when they say because it's a different shape that it must be a different you know it must be some transition or transition or something like that then <laughs> yeah it, it's it's pretty laughable when you got yeah it's, stuff it's like more of a that. size difference you know what i mean so you have these footprints yeah. you know and this is an early casting of the smaller set of footprints at this site. So what's sitting next to this young gentleman is a child's footprint. And you even have the big toe, like you said. That's pretty obvious right there. You can even see the shadow around it at the top on the yeah. right of it. You know? Yeah. And then you see his big toe up there. And it's just like, wow. <laughs> it's identical. So we, have a, we have a child's footprint. Except, and, except, except the little toe is a little bit off to the left on that one, and because it's walking in mud, right? Sort of hard mud, not really ultra soft mud, but mud all the same. So it probably just stepped in there, and its toe squished aside in a bit of mud, and that looks exactly like what a footprint would look like from a person if they were walking through the mud, and and but it's identical in shape to that other foot to that. You know, so you can see it's in the human range today. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we took measurements, you know, and uh, compared it to uh, charts of foots of my feet sizes of modern humans and found out that the footprints at the site, if the measurements are correct for the length in the original literature, um, that they belong to children from like five to eight years old so what you have here are footprints of children okay in my opinion uh five-year-old and probably someone like eight nine years old depending on the sex of the individual so again you know like it's pretty obvious that these are human footprints and here you have a tale being told because the layer that they're found in has been exhaustively dated to 3.7 million years old. You know, like these are the oldest human appearing footprints that have been discovered. Dated. Exhaustively dated. Exhaustively dated in their, they, they, their dating just quickly, methods. <laughs> quickly, just quickly, what they mean by exhaustive um, dating method, um, that they mean that they exhaustively tried to find out if they could turn re reclassify that that layer to a different age and they they found out they couldn't because of the fossils they found in it because they date the the rock by the fossils they found find in it so 
and somewhere else there would be fossils in that layer so they can't rename the layer so exhaustively they had to sort of come up with another excuse <laughs> sorry I'd... yeah no it's all good um but yeah i mean that's i think we pretty much have the same opinion on this one right I mean, you yeah, have sure. the out, we have other stuff mentioned, I mean, the outtowing here of the smaller individual, you know, you can see that the footprints are sort of out to the side. Um, this is just a common walking complication that occurs in modern humans. Uh, it's the opposite of what's in towing, you know, and a lot of children have this walking complication before they reach the age of six or seven years old. Where usually it'll correct itself uh, naturally. Uh, sometimes they have to get surgeries done to correct it, but you know. So here you have evidence. Of, hey, Robin. All right. Here you have evidence of um, you know a common modern human walking condition being present in these footprints at Laetoli. So I think that's some of the best evidence that these belong to humans. And that, that uh, coupled with the fact that these smaller footprints fall within the like range of what would be a to five-year-old child. So. Okay, so like this walking condition modernly, this out-towing uh, happens to occur in children under the age of six years old so and this is this is the size of the footprints that we see in the smaller individual at Laetoli. now there have been claims made by this out towing um observation before that there was carrying something that the second individual is carrying something but you gotta wow. understand yeah and that's just from that's just from these prints but you've got to understand that they're imagining these tiny animals that are supposed to be four feet tall, you know, with human feet. When this is about the size of a child, okay? And that's, and that's really what it comes down to, is that they have small footprints that they've discovered and have added a story to. And there's no reason to believe that these are not human footprints other than the fact that they've exhaustively dated these layers to 3.7 million years old using radiometric dating methods, okay? And they've also discovered what they claim are Australopithecus afarensis uh, fragments nearby in the Laetoli area in the same layers, but not at this pathway site. You know, and there you're making another leap to assume that the LH uh, discoveries, these uh, what are claimed to be awesome hissing that were discovered by Mary Leakey, they're claiming that these bones that they discovered in the same layers must belong to the same animals that made the footprints in that area. So there you have another instance where they're connecting evidence that shouldn't necessarily be connected, taking huge leaps, you know. I think that's pretty evident in this. So, yeah, they believe that the adults of these individuals were about as tall as children. And that's what's going on. They found these tiny footprints. And I think we're ready to move on with the video, though. So, unless you've got anything else to add, brother. Uh, no, uh, no. Okay. Um, all right. So, let me get up here. Sorry. Yeah. See, the thing is, is the, the footprints, correct. if the lengths are correct, uh, gum would be two children, you know? If the lengths of the footprints given in the original literature, it comes out to be individuals that are four and eight, uh, well, four to five and for the smaller individual and then like eight to nine years old, if they were modern humans for the larger set. So there was no, you know, but like I said, they're adults. They believe that these Australopithecine afarensis, that their adults are as tall as our children. And I actually have a 
picture of what I did. Nah, never mind, I don't. And how old would the um, adult be in this photo? There's more than one adult. And no, actually, that long, that long elongated. Oh, hang on, I've got to get back to that now. Uh, there. That long elongated footprint. Just let me see if it gets into focus. It's a bit better than that. Okay. So that long elongated footprint is. Uh, is also that can happen see as you walk sometimes through mud you hit different thicknesses of mud in the same thing like here you've got this and, and your foot can slip like this and your heel becomes gets that sort of does get that exact look i've seen that in mud and the toes here are a bit longer you can see they look a bit longer and that's because this foot and it's deeper here or raised or either raised or deeper like it depends it's pushing on the mud how the mud you know reacts and and that's basically a foot that sort of slipped a bit as they're walking and then in the next step it's something else and then that step it hits a bit like a pat, pat see that area there like i've seen that in mud where you got this area here where it's not as wet and then you get a patch where it's really sloppy like a puddly sort of muddy spot and then you step over and it's different again so each foot print here looks like someone walking through slippery mud um, and sort of stepping down and stepping carefully. As you can see, the toe here is spread on the top one, the second from the top adult foot. The, the, the toe is sort of spread out a bit as it steps. And I've seen that with my own toes and when I step in mud. I've seen all of these shapes from my own foot. Every single shape here, I've seen that my own foot make every shape here. And that's the same foot. <laughs> Yeah, and so, like you said, uh, you know, like you just said, different densities of mud will make different shaped footprints, and even longer ones, the more th thin the mud is. So, and here you have gum in the chat just to address the chat saying uh, they still didn't walk next to each other. Basically, you know, their shoulders would collide just by how close to the person. And, and you know, a lot of people hold that opinion because of the depth of the footprints, and they think that one pass through at a different time when the density of the mud was different but so you see that yeah you see that they might not have been there when it sunk if you were if you were walking in slippery mud you'd take short steps you'd take short steps right and and you'd you'd place your foot down instead of sort of like walking and pushing off with your foot you'd lift it up move it across and then place it down then lift it up move it across and place it down instead of as you walk you push off with the ball of your foot as you walk and see that one is where it slipped the first one adult foot is where it slipped when he pushed off the ball of the foot and now he's placing them down and and gently and doing small steps that's what i'd do if i was walking through mud and then he's hit a part there where there's like maybe a little bit of water flowing across the top of that mud there and turning that just that like in a little small section sort of soft and then and and he sort of stepped down in that and slipped a bit on on the second top one and then stepped over again and sunk down a bit and see how the toes are more raised and it's more sunken down in the middle here that means that it was more wet there where the arch of the foot was um the where the toes were the toes was in the arch of the, the toes sort of stayed up and the arch of the foot pushed down into the mud and then it stepped over and so on and so on and that's what i think is happening here it's walking across slimy sloppy wet mud i've done that so many times and and that exact thing and step just like that real small steps and slipped around and look back at my tracks and they're all been different looking like they come from different people and so there's an explanation for that of just you're lucky you bumped into someone that's walked through hundreds of kilometers of uh of mud yo hey there you go mate it's this yeah, yeah. It's, it's late over here we're from denmark six in the morning um, okay. what is this about i just joined in buddy i'm sorry okay you, you can explain to him see science i love science uh like these old like these old uh footprints in the in the in the earth especially and what you're really seeing uh all around you from from thousands of years ago but when you when you're actually sitting in your house thinking about the ground under you saying it's maybe gold, it's maybe shit, it's maybe bones, you know, people have been working for this ground in many, many years. Interesting. 
It is interesting. It's an interesting field of research. The the mugger they just found a lot of gold treasures. Uh, uh, four years ago, they found the biggest collections of gold amulets, you know, from the Viking times, or uh, two hundred uh, BC Christ. It's crazy. Like still today. Hmm. Oh, where, where are you from? I'm from the States, and uh, Jason, he's from Tasmania, Australia. Uh, cool, cool. That's where our, uh, our uh, queen is from. Uh, we, the queen just go off, so now her son is the king of Denmark. And uh, the king of Denmark's... Uh, well, the king of Denmark is married with a, a girl from Tasmania called Mary. Huh. Oh, no, no oh yeah, that's right. He married a he married a Tasmanian poor guy. Yeah, <laughs> poor guy, no poor that, woman. No, nah, no, I know she's good looking. She's beautiful. I know she's, she's really so, beautiful. Like she's so beautiful. Even as she ages, she's still beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. After, you're, so, right. you're right. About I know you're right about it. I just sing karaoke with uh, a girl from Philippine or two girls from Philippine in an open panel in here uh, for two hours. I'm like. Yeah, <laughs> they sing uh, very good, but it was the most basic songs with basic piano. Just like, why are you even doing this? He had two hundred thousand subs on YouTube. I was like, fucking man. <laughs> yeah. Seven view and is still. Like, this is more interesting. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, what, what are you guys about? Uh, you work or only do this shit? Like, well, what is this about? Or what are you about? It's not Exposing the uh, lies of uh, the lies of evolution. Evolution. Exposing, yeah. So I mean, okay, I, see, I know. I, I see that it makes sense now. Seeing this, uh, interesting. Very fucking interesting. I like yeah. it. Um, yeah. That's to say that some um, those footprints are. Uh, you're allowed to have your own opinions on here anyway, so whatever you want. But Absolutely, they say that yeah. those footprints are like 2 million years old or 3 million years old. And because they were found back when, say, Lucy's Lostropithecus afarensis, like sort of things, Lucy's were running around the planet and they can't read that, redate the layer to a different age, then they, and they're stuck with that age. So they say that these human footprints, these very yeah. human looking yeah. footprints, was yeah. the person, yeah. evolutionist who discovered it said, yeah. um, are from, uh, are from a nostril epithecine. And when you look at the, the statue of Lucy that they show everybody, she's got human feet. So basically they're admitting by default that, that they are human feet. Because if you look at Lucy's, um, image, like look up, uh, Lucy, Australopithecus, Australopithecus afarensis, and uh, you'll see you'll see the human feet. So there you go. So they're saying that it's Australopithecus. It looks like an alien. So me. they're basically saying that it's full human feet, full human. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I see. It looks like an alien to me. You know what I mean? A monkey alien, like with, <laughs> I don't know, it's a dwarf yes. or like a. It look, looks like an alien to me, with something in the hand. It does. How long it 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 got like a woo. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe it was the aliens who men, seeded men. us. They give us this <laughs> no, shit and they that. say, figure it out, make it. a carrot, make a potato out of this shit. I put it on my dick. I don't believe that. I don't sure, believe sure. that. Sure, sure. Listen, that evolution, joking. the problem with that is we, we don't got get stucky. over and, and think it's it tough. But, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but what is your problem, man? Come on. The, the, we 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 maybe uh, not come from monkey or whatever. We come from a lot of shit. I don't. What do we know now? Why why we have to discutate that? Let's well, talk about how money is destroying our souls, and and that's why you are a slave. Well, no, no, I'm 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 poor. I, I don't have money, and I don't. Yeah, why you money. think? Why you why you believe so? Why? I don't accept if you're actually being totally honest. Is your no, no, I don't think that I'm, I just, a, I, just I believe in say through faith, right? And and also I don't accept donations. And if you watch any of my videos it's on just my like channel, me, man, respect, yeah. just like me. I say, don't give me, and this give me more. 
Yeah. Well, so, the reason I say don't give it to me is because I'd end up spending it on things other than was meant for God, you know what I mean? But that's because like you I'd, know I'd you're precisely going to do that. Like my dogs or, or that they needed or something like that. And, how, and how old are you, sir? Do it unless how I want to spend you? it on what people donated it for. So I just how, tell how, people not to bother. How old are you? Sorry. Oh, I'm 55. I'm, I'm not 23, you know. Oh, okay. I'm still learning. I have my own place here. My girlfriend just left. Hey, man. We're all in trouble, and I'm proud too. But, like, yeah. Who's really going to help, you know? You can do 100, thing, uh, 100 times better than you mother think, but you can do 1,000 times better than you self think. Now you're 53. You're I'd agree with that. Say. But, like, absolutely. Who's going to believe in you Foresight now? Foresight is everything. You? Like, if your kids are not there, like, they do in other um, countries, like, where the poor and but the grandparents take care of that to the die and, and so on. Do that. No, you know what I mean? Like, it's, we don't have time for our own children anymore. It's disgusting. Well, <laughs> What is uh, what's disgusting? Like having children and stuff like no, that. Like not having t time to take care of them, putting them in oh, yeah, institutions, sure. giving them iPads. That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, yes, that's right. I'm young and thinking about well, like, damn, it's it's impossible to even imagine how much I have to learn to take care of my child without it getting taken first day it pops out. You know? Yeah, this is oh, like yeah. a big problem. I feel like yeah. Oh yeah, you, you do have. Um, the, the, it's all over the world. The fathers not uh, being Absolutely. there for their kids. Like I, yeah, yeah. I wasn't there for my stepson as much as I could have been. Yeah, I, I, I tried. I, I tried that too. I never hit him. Time. I never Last year him. I was with uh, my teacher, and she had a son. Like a my... High school teacher. We were adults both. I, I think my 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 son, my stepson, got one one whack. Just one in, in like seven years, five years, five, what six, is whack? seven years. I can't remember how long now. It's quite a long time. That's now. a long time. Yeah, one whack, just one, and in one whack, that's it, and not even but that it, hard. You know, yeah. like I could have, I could have broken bones. My, so my stepson, he me. called me a monkey, and Jeff I fucked his mom on two couches I put together because she <laughs> have to lay in the mom's bed every night. Yeah. Oh, damn things tapping on the edge of the bed. Oh, pain in the neck. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, the way that uh, society's going. It's yeah, I, I, I did DMT. Don't... I did DMT last week. Have you tried that? What's that? DMT. Uh no, no, no I, 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 no, I oh, you... drug, but I'm interested. What, what is it? I couldn't really what was explain your experience it, like? I could, but it's a long story. But like, it, it's it's something you smoke like three base crystals. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like almost, yeah, sure. My friend he makes it himself, uh, white crystals, and um, very clean, of course. And then we smoke a little bit in the start. In two days, we did little heads, so we were laying back. We see the colors and like mushroom just for a few minutes. But then uh, yeah. in the second day or third day. I, I did a breakthrough, what you call it, when you break through to the actually trip and the world, kind of in a waiting yeah. room, if you don't. And then I did a half cream. Mm -hmm. It tastes like shit. Smoke that, and I finally put the worst fucking video on, because the music goes off, and he put a new song, and it was a trip song that he shouldn't put on, the worst song. You will understand if you saw it. The worst shit ever. And I got a bad trip, but I was laying down again, and I was going through the fucking shit craziest walls in like 15 minutes but the crazy thing is when you come back you're totally normal uh, can't even remember what happened almost but like crazy dmt is like uh it's, it does like last that long right 15 minutes yeah it's like uh, from it from the amazon jungle An hour? the bark no. the bark from the tree or the fox have it but it's like uh, very, very psychedelic like, yeah but uh that was experience, like yeah. I don't know. You guys talking about footprints, like it's interesting, but these don't look like much. 
Oh, I apologize. Uh, my friend, I was just talking, came no, into the room. Yeah. I don't know what, what, what happened, what was going on. I haven't got sea science. Did, oh, here he is, he's back. Did you, <laughs> you want to say, you just saying, I was talking to my friend for a second. Sea science yeah. is it, yeah. conspiracies. Uh, yeah, I, I heard that's in frogs. Too. All right, okay, all right, anyway. Yeah. Sorry, I was talking to my friend. Anyway, he's, he's and some kind of friend. some kind of African <laughs> grass, some kind of African yeah. grass. Like, you know, I you know won't. who talked about DMT a lot was Terence McKenna. No, no, I'm, I'm, I, I won't. Not you. But, Sorry, but I was talking thing, to my friend. Apologize. DMT is in your brain already, and that's the thing sure. you're going out when you're dying. That's what you can't figure out. Why is this re removed or released first when you die? But when you're smoking, well, also release. DM, the DMT is 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 like the the fake the fake cannabis, right? Okay, it's, it's, uh, it's, no, it's not cannabis. spice. We're not talking about spice, but DMT is the hardest drug ever. It's like oh, you take LSD like and mushrooms <laughs> put together oh, for yeah. fifteen minutes like for real. That's how oh, you get. Do you see lots of? Do you see lots of colors? I can show you precisely how it looks. I, I found a video exactly really, that. really, really good. Uh, no, 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 no. You don't, don't, don't please. need a video. Look, there's, there's no, there's a. It, it's it, what is it again exactly? Like what's it? It's, it's it? called. It's DMT. Yeah. It's detro, detro yeah. something, something terrinol or something like that. It comes from it's the DMT. Of, that's uh, the tree. Yeah. I put the okay. video so on comes the the market, link in the private like chat if you want to check out. I've heard right. I've heard people talk about that they've heard voices and stuff and like have it ex yeah, experiences yeah, yeah. with some because sort of entity. And shit. Sure. Yeah, I saw entities in the end, and they were green. Well, that's not good. But well, we believe crazy. we believe that that's that's demonic entities. Like if you're if well, you're having I, a I, an I experience, well, speak, speak for yourself now. Speak for yeah, yourself yeah. now, because yeah. I have a Christian man. This is yeah. like God is to me. This well, is a trip in an event. It's not really unless true, God, event. God speaks to you directly, and it says in the Bible to test all spirits. I would love that. So if something but, speaks to you and claims to be God, then it doesn't necessarily mean it's God, and it literally says test all spirits. I wouldn't so, believe either. Yeah, true, true. So yeah. It, it's it, it's it's sort of even telling you that if something appears to you and tells you that it's God, that to to test it to see if it is God or not, because the devil doesn't know everything like God does. In my opinion, yeah, but when you're saying it like of, that, uh, parents make... yeah. huh? Go ahead, Andy. I'm sorry. Um, no, I was. You were talking first. Sorry. Oh, sure. Yeah, you know, I was saying, uh, Unitarians make parents shingles. You might just say DMT. Yeah, Am I lagging? Yeah, no, you're right now. Oh, is oh. you're right now. Yeah, you are. Oh, cheers up. Sorry, mate. I was just talking to my friend. He just came in the door, and every time I talk to my friend, oh, he would say, to drop out and come back in. <laughs> you don't live your own uh, womb. So, how about just quickly we let C Science explain this and let this video play through? And yes, then we yes. Can talk after the video. yes, absolutely. As soon as, but as soon as C Science comes back, that is. I mean, if he if he, if he is going to come back, I don't know. I think he had to restart his phone or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. So yeah, it's like I don't know what you believe, but a lot of people believe in in weird things. Yes. Like if believe, you believe, it it for me it matters if you believe, but that's your freedom to believe. Uh, I don't yeah. I don't I don't uh, right. practice the same as you. I I respect you for that. That's that's what I'm saying. I I believe in you because you believe in love, respect, uh, family. Uh, you sound like a decent man, you know. Don't Thank don't you. make religion uh, something with belief because religion for me is something you do with your family. I I'm, okay. I'm religious in my own way. I don't yep. 
go to church because Feminism. the priest the priest is doing uh, illegal things doing rituals yeah, yeah. without yeah. the church oh, no. in freemason lodges yeah. and shit yeah they go against the, the Danish My... church law <laughs> so i, I read the bible reading, myself yes. i was reading the comments uh, yes yes he, 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 he is. see yourself believe yourself do yourself but, um, yeah the, well my friend I, I know about uh i know about those sort of things so yeah I know about you satanism don't, don't, you but uh yourself. yeah sin is yeah, yeah, everywhere it's it's himself yeah um, what is, sex it? today, what is not in you my brother day? do as you wilt do as okay. you wilt and treat others as you want to be treated yourself yeah well there you go yeah that's 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 don't, a cultism, don't be yeah. don't be uh all right okay let's watch this let's watch this video and let's see science explain yes. it all right see science you're explaining about yes. the tracks do you want to just start the video see science or you don't know where you left off can you remember uh yeah i mean i'll i'll just add to it so he knows where we're at i mean basically you have this character here named guts that gibbon uh erica here on youtube i don't know if you're aware of her but in our community she's basically our community's paleoanthropologist you know cool. expert you know and she's yeah. claiming she's, she's uh he's like the dracula of of the of our uh yeah. creationist <laughs> community <laughs> <laughs> well no no it's cool but uh, yeah, I mean, she's basically claiming, well, she's reading a book right now. And what she just read was that the book says that the Lucy, the Lucy find, you know, Lucy, I, I, the I show my... Yeah, that's my. Yeah, keep going, man. Keep going. Say something. Yeah, she was basically uh, showing how the Australopithecus is. Um, Look, look, look She's trying. Okay, so yeah. What she got? She, she <laughs> have a, this oil. I, it's warm up her. And look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of that. All right. So uh, it was nice to have you on, man. <laughs> and we'll just go on with this video <laughs> if it's all right with jason jason did you uh did i lose you oh no <laughs> i used to go around right. looking at those those sort of things when i was uh when i was a little kid so in the in king's cross and and i was only a little kid so and i used to walk around and 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 walk into the shops like i was only about like just turned 13. and then i thought oh let's go have a look through here and i used to walk through this <laughs> sure. oh, look at this look at that yeah you, i didn't touch anything though because i always heard stories about you don't want to touch anything in there because all the sickos have been pouring through the books and they've got sure. their you know yeah <laughs> so i used to walk through i knew that my was hands. i i kind of had a feeling that was going to happen but <laughs> It was good to have you on the show anyway, Andy. I just, uh, we're going to get back into the evolution versus creation topic here, I think. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you have Erica here claiming that the book is incorrect, where the book is claiming that the Lucy conglomeration, this fossil conglomeration, the most famous fossil conglomeration of paleoanthropology known throughout the entire world is actually just a collection of human and tree dwelling ape remains and not what it's claimed to be it's not a single individual but instead a group of remains from multiple species and multiple individuals so here we go are you ready to move on with this uh yeah 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 all right all right all right here we go Oh, it's just it's playing, but it's yeah, it's silent. So I guess we can talk about it. The prints looked quite similar to those made by modern people. However, the footprints at site G are smaller than the average human footprint. Uh, yeah. So their their argument is that they're smaller. 
The tracks ranged from about seven to eight and a half inches in length. If the creature made the footprints were wearing shoe shopping today, where they're going shoe shopping today, they'd probably fit best in a U.S. woman's size four or five. That doesn't mean they're not human footprints, you know, especially if they're children footprints. So now this claim in this bit here is actually way off because when you look at the measurements of the footprints given in Mary Leakey's original literature, it's actually the size of children's footprints that would be from four to five years old to seven to eight years old in age. So that's what's going on in Lake Tilly. There's no adult involved because the footprints are the size of children's feet, you know. While the claim of the community, the paleoanthropological community, is that these are adult australopithecine both of them so and it's been long taught that you know they might be holding hands but like gum pointed out they're so close that they'd be rubbing shoulder to shoulder they were not holding hands likely it's more likely that one passed through at a different time than the other one okay um if they're from the same group who knows but that's what we have there is it looks like children's footprints and they're walking through would be a, a volcanic ash layer. Okay, so and and it, they were basically that, escaping that, or trying to escape a volcanic eruption, and they had taken yeah, cover. but also and, that that whatever they were walking on was slippery, and you could see that that one part of what they walk on walked on was soft and and had more water in it than the other part. So there was water in there. Whatever they were walking, it might have been ash, right? But there was water mixed in with that ash. It was like mud. You can see from the from the shape of it. It wasn't just. It might have been. It might have been that the ash is slippery too. We don't sure. know. And it might have been that there was a there was a deeper part of the ash there that they stepped in. Then you know what I mean. They might have, you know there's gullies in the ground. Well, the ash the you ash becomes that, mud. You know. Yeah, I know, but but it's not just that. It, it was they reckon it was during a volcanic eruption. But even if it was just ash, but ash would like if you're walking along and you've got the ash that's <clears throat> that say, um, you know, three inches deep, and then you've got this little gully in the ground, little uneven part in the ground, and the ash goes into the uneven part, and the ash is saying it goes straight from being three inches to eight inches deep, and you step in that as you're walking well you'd have the same sort of effect it would look the similar to mud because ash is i mean i i've got to say it and i'm sure you have too have you ever been out camping with your family when they've had a massive bonfire and then you walk through the bonfire like days later when it goes cool and the ash have you ever walk through ash like that well sure i mean if the ash was i don't know so you get a but if it thing. gets rained on a few times, you know how that ash gets all compacted and turns into like mud. Yeah, that's what yeah. they're walking through. We used to go camping all the time, like we go camping oh, yeah. and fishing and stuff like that. And we, you know, they were they were hippie sort of semi hippie sort of Christians. And there you go. And yeah, and it was, uh, and we used to go have big bonfires, and they'd all stand around drinking and talking and parties. And stuff, and then and then my grandfather used to have a big bonfire at uh, New Year's Eve at his place, and stuff. And then that fire would burn down, and I'd turn up a week later because it takes it a week to cool down. Where you could walk through. One time, I actually stepped in it, and it was the next day, and it looked like it was cool, and I burnt my foot badly. But um, and other times, I've walked through it when it's all gone cool, and yeah, and I can see my footprints in it. So I can say that a similar sort of thing would happen with ash, sure. especially to to mud so when i look back in ash when i walk through it but some that ash would be more compacted too it would be it wouldn't be falling like all loose and fluffy like you get with ash when it's first when the fire first burns away and it all cools down it would be more compacted as it fell it would fall into like a powder and the powder would compact and you could see them walking through powder in this and go and acting in a similar fashion to mud I, I mean, I've never walked through that type of. I've never walked through volcanic ash, so I can't say that. But sure, that's what I imagine. So there's my word salad. Someone would say, but what I said, is true. I like it. I like it. Sounds good. good. You know, it's too bad Andy had to turn this into a show and tell. I mean, 
<laughs> I wanted to talk to him about Terrence McKenna and stuff. You really never have heard of uh, Terrence McKenna and his uh, DMT machine elves that he heard. These no. entities he's supposed to talk to. Yeah, this. You know, have you ever heard of Terrence McKenna? Uh. Uh-uh. Okay, so this guy. And this even this even ties in with evolution, mind you. Okay, yeah. so Terrence McKenna, he basically has this idea that humankind gained consciousness and civilization from eating psychedelic chemicals. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, because it opens the, the mind and and stuff, and right. they're actually looking into psychedelic chemicals to helping with depression and stuff like that. It's sure, it's, it's like um, they they're finding that the similar chemicals in the body and, and all sorts of things with it. And, and it, it can help some people. I don't like that sort of stuff. I don't yeah. like things that, that bend up my, I got friends that love it. They, they love, they, they, they love the, the type of things that make your, your, your fingers grow and stuff when you're looking at them and stuff, <laughs> but not me, but yeah, they're, they're starting to look into research and all that. I don't sort of, yeah. Hey, welcome to the show, Darth. Good to see you. Hey, I'm sick of the math, so I couldn't... Wait, can you guys hear me good? Oh, yeah, you sound good. You're coming through. All right, let me turn off that fan. So, yeah, I was uh, <laughs> couldn't get in an alert because I was in the bath. So, I'm going to share my screen, so... All right. Uh, there's something in front. What is this? Well, it's this, but... I, yeah, remove your go- picture, Sea Science. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what's happening here? Like I said earlier, these are clearly not side by side because if they were side by side, you would have to talk about Siamese twin. So what, what's happening here? Here's. Oh, here. You guys see this? Yeah, I'd agree with you on that, and I think that's why a lot of the paleoanthropological paleoanthropological community is now claiming that the individuals walked by separately from each other. And we're not actually holding hands anymore. So. Let me give me a second. I'm trying to switch pencil type. I don't know what the heck it's. Oh man, it's been, it's been some time since they used this. Oh, freaking tools. But yeah, so Erica in this video, she straight up claims that no one would suggest that these look just like human footprints. When in fact they look just like human footprints. So much so that when Mary discovered them. Okay, that she said, "Hey, these look just like human footprints." Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> and then obvious. she flat out denies it. Sorry. No, it's obvious. They're freaking, uh, you know, footprints. Why the heck is a number one? Number two. Oh, that's probably one. Well, it's it's they these prints um okay, here, are. Uh, uh, so, like if, if when, when someone was walk, if someone was walking through either see. wet, slippery ash. Here, here, let, 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 let me let me just do a quick thing. See how the see how the prints align with each other. These are sets. So clearly, the kid, the kid isn't walking next to this person, but he is mimicking the person that came before it. He's counting them. So the reason you see this, uh, you know, the the foot being spread, you know, outwardly, is because he's taking a stride to mimic the person that walked before. Yeah, I've done that when I'm walking beside my parents. I've done that. But it's clear that's that's what's happening here. They can't be next to each I've other. They that. wait. Exactly. They are way too close to be next to each other. And the and you can and in more and more and more importantly. They match, count them. So the kid is intentionally mimicking the, the, the steps. So as a result of mimicking the steps, the stride, the kid ha, you know, has to take a wider, a, a wider, you know, a wider stride to match the, the adult or the, you know, the older kid. But as a result of that, the, the, twi- the, the foot naturally turns a little bit more. So you know you can you can still have balance. So that's clearly what's happening here. It's not a mystery. Uh, I, I agree. I agree that that's one hundred percent. I've done that exact thing. I remember walking along beside my parents, mimicking them walking through the sand and on the edge of the water, and walking up the beach and that, and stomping beside them and 
stretching out your footsteps and being a you know little deal I, i've done that sort of thing exactly so i can imagine that happening for sure well that's exactly what's happening here because if you count the steps they're the same amount and they're you know they're parallel to each other so a normal kid yeah takes more steps you know to walk the same distance as an older kid but that's not i would happening say here. that it looks like the larger set is mimicking the child's footprints in a, a way doubt. because it's almost oh, as yeah. though the older yeah, set, yeah, you're the right. older child the older together. child is like close too close together so they're like taking tiny steps on purpose you uh, know yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. No. but yeah, like i i really do believe that that's uh a common you know, modern human walking complication, this out towing. And this, the size of the footprints match the age group for it's modern not, humans that it, would have it's that. Not, it's not a complication. It is a result of taking, of a uh, somebody who is smaller to trying to take a stride to equate the, the that, same that distance. Could be it too. That's exactly what's happening here because it makes no sense for an adult to act childish, but it makes both. sense for a sure. But it makes sense for a child to act childish. Yeah, if a child was sort of taking a larger step, but we don't know how far apart these these steps are. Do you know sure. how far apart they are, see science, so we can work out how far that a normal kid steps. And regardless of step. if it was them taking those steps like that, or if it's because of and the if they were complication, we can both agree. I think that these are very human-looking footprints, I mean, and yeah. just by the footprints, there's no reason to assume they're australopithecine. I mean, Would just you try. Agree? Well, yeah, just try to take a, a larger stride than you normally used to. Your your foot will naturally twist because you need yeah. that stability. Sure, sure, sure. But would you agree yeah. with that, that they are Us. definitely human? Yeah, they're, they're definitely, yeah, you can tell it's human because there's a pattern here. Who who, who does mimicking? Humans do mimicking. Oh, sure. That's a good point, is, too. And this also requires counting. Unless, you know, they, they want to say monkeys count. <laughs> Wow. Well, I'm I'm glad you pointed that out because that is that's very interesting that they line up like that. But I would stick to the idea myself that the older child here was mimicking the smaller one's footsteps. But it's interesting because they're saying that the larger footprints sunk deeper in the ground. And you gotta think, well, they're a little bit heavier of people, you know, but they're trying to claim that's another reason to believe that the second individual walked by at a different no, time. There's one of those kids' footprints is yeah. sunken deep in the ground. Well, if you're trying to retain stability, you don't. You want to take a little bit, you know, uh, less wider steps. So if you're walking through mud, you naturally take steps a little bit more cautiously. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Especially if it's slippy mud. You don't if the mud's got a little bit of grit in it, or it's. Or it's like you, you, as you sit in, your foot sinks in enough where it doesn't slip backwards. But if the mud's shallow and and it's or say it's like ash with water in it, and, and it's basically ash mud. If it's if it's if the mud's shallow, then and and it's and it's slippery, really slippery. You take smaller steps and you lift your foot up, move it across, and place it down. Lift your foot up, other foot up, move it across, place it down. Lift your other foot up, move it across, place it down. You don't push off with the ball of your foot. Like in one of those photos, it shows that it's it's elongated the toes and the heels sort of a little bit pointed at the back. Well, that happens when you slip in the mud as you walk off. You get those sort of weird shapes in the mud like that. So I think that that one was where they slipped a bit and then they started walking carefully and maybe they were holding the child's arm and the, holding the child up and the child's sort of half walking, half dangling, and that could be another scenario well, too I, I, so it could I, be a lot of things i don't think it can hold the child because they're way too close to you know to be you know holding each other you know how you hold you know you're like you, you could i've held haven't maybe you? behind like, i've had so many kids in my family i've been around so many young kids i've looked after so many kids that that i know mate yes you can hold the arm up close to your chest when you're walking like if you want to if you're trying to keep stability you're not going to hold them far out to the side because you'll slip and move you but yeah. if that was slip you'd hold them in closer to your chest the arm and the kid would be walking almost right beside you just inches away their steps would be from yours no the is, yeah the, that could be another explanation the, the, be. if they are holding the kid the, the kid will have to be behind and mimicking the steps no 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 you could hold the kid up because it's only light and you're a, no, a stronger yeah. kid or a bigger kid no and you the, can the, hold the little kid's arm arm and hold it up close to your chest and let the, the kid dangle down with its arm dangling down 
the side no, of your no. chest and the kid's feet would be half dangling, half stepping. No, the, as the well, reason, and that would the, throw the steps out no, as well. No, the reason that's not the case here. That would explain here. the adult no. feet, but or the uh, like older kids' feet being closer together. Sorry. No, the case that's not the case here is because they're way too close that you would have to suggest they are Siamese twins. It, it's physically okay. impossible. Yeah. Okay. All right. I know that, but what I said, it could happen like that. You could hold a kid with arm, but but it also could. yours is just as valid. Yours yeah. is, is just yours could be exactly that too. The kid yeah, we, following along just behind as well. It could be that as well. It could be what Sea Science said as well. Could be. But there you go. But I know what you mean. No, you you're right. It's it's it, it could be anything. It could be like I mean, one of the. Look yeah. how close they are. That's impossible sure. to fit two humans. No, in that that's not impossible if you're holding the kid's <coughs> arm. You're walking with something not, slippery. Not, and you're stabilizing the kid, and you're holding not, the kid close to your arm against your chest, say or against the side where your rib cage is and you're holding the arm again to try and keep balance yourself and the kid was sort of half dangling half walking yeah the only, the only way and you can, you can see the evidence of slipping and you can see further up to the left where it's sunken down more in one area so it's stepping off into a and you can even see the cracking from mud where it's half dry on top but went underneath beside it in the rock it looks like it, it looks like the rocks preserved that where mud sort of stays sort of dries a bit on top and you get those cracks and little like triangular cracks and all different shaped cracks octagon cracks and all different shapes and then it so it looks like even that's been preserved there no, it's, and it's stepped off from the harder more slippery mud into the deeper mud the, the only way stuff. you can fit the only way you can fit like two people in that proximity is they were facing each other but this is side by side walking which makes it physically impossible sure and we all agree they're close together i'd say that and we all agree that one might be mimicking the other one because they're in line and it was it's really clear. great that gum pointed that out yeah, yeah so regardless of that we all agree that these are human appearing footprints which is exactly what mary leakey said who is the one that discovered this say g here in 1978. in fact gutsip gibbons just got done claiming okay in this video previously that nobody thinks that they're human looking footprints i mean the discoverers kind of said that they looked human but and then she went on and had some word salad but what she denied is the truth because the truth is when mary leakey found them she said the prints look quite similar to those made by modern human people however the footprints at site g are smaller than average human footprints so their their main the main contestant here is that they're smaller than so average a, human not adults <laughs> so they're not adults right oh, <laughs> oh we lost you we lost your audio oh you um, there jason um there is here yeah yeah oh sorry yeah no it's yeah it's like i've uh, have you i don't know it, it's i suppose if, if i was walking through like um two inch deep slippery mud and it was like two inches deep then it was slippery underneath really slippery i'd hold the kid's arm against my chest and 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 like if i had to hold the kid up a bit i wouldn't be able to hold it out because it'd off balance you i'd hold the kid try to keep the weight in the center of my gravity hold the kid's arm against my chest sort of holding him up at the same time and having him walking directly beside me and then when i got off into the deeper mud i could relax a bit more because my foot wouldn't you know i'd have a bit more support around your foot as you sunk into the mud and you can see that's what i think is happening there too so but your one could be as well well um, it's, i think it's clear what's happening is the kid if yeah, they are holding hands if the kid is falling well behind likely to, could be that as well could very well be your description is yeah 100 percent could be yeah, and, I, like, and and it like you said the foot would twist as the if the kid was trying to stomp to match like the a, adult but, oh no the older kid it's not an adult it's an older kid i keep saying adult but it's an, actually just an older kid mm -hmm. it's not an adult and um it's like an eight-year-old and a five-year-old or a four or five-year-old and, and an eight-year-old or something eight nine-year-old or something like that um so but it, it could just be like you know the, the older one trying to stabilize the other one by holding it you know i don't know could be that it was following along and mimicking his older brother or sister or whatever yeah, because this, this is not shallow mud this is a bit deep yeah you've got you've got the first part is is shallow 
and then it gets and then it just steps immediately off the 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 shallow part into the deeper part you see that there's one footprint goes straight from the shallow part straight into a deeper part and and that that is happens with mud too because as well because you get areas like a shelf of mud where it's like you know really firm and slippery and hard underneath but there's a softer layer on top and you walk along and you don't sink in that much but a bit but not that much but then you you'll step off and you'll little look the same but then you'll sink down more because it's softer i've actually stepped off, stepped off that and sunk down into like what's quick quicksand yeah because it, this, get out. This is, yeah because this is not you know american driveway mud when you know you just step on it you, maybe your foot your no i know i'm feet. talking about actual mud like black yeah. Well, it's smooth mud like clay mud is what i'm talking about yeah. and, and, and that, yeah and and i've walked through hundreds literally of miles of it or, or kilometers uh, hundreds for sure in my whole life i've walked i used to go walking 30 kilometers every couple of days i'd walk a 30 kilometer walk through swamps and 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 up along beaches and like at the beach where i was was 17 kilometers long or something 11 kilometers or 17 kilometers i think it's 17 kilometers long so to walk from my place up to um point plumber from where i was staying at 13 north shore drive port macquarie because i don't live there anymore so i can say that it doesn't really matter someone else who ever lives there but anyway i don't live there anymore but i used to walk from there through the swamps out the back of my house was um uh the land owned by a jewish guy we were friends and i used to walk through his land and then through 1800 1800 acres of roger dal hunty's land he's a famous real estate developer up there so i can say his name it's not like he's it's, it's, and um and that was all swamps and tidal swamps and smooth wet mud and deep mud and hard mud and all different areas and you had to walk through all different types of mud sandy mud like most of it was just um smooth wet just like clay wet clay uh yeah so oh you well, want me uh, to share out that thing yeah. okay yeah because like that, that's all the information you can get from this i mean you know aside from these steps yeah th that's all the information you can really gather from this you can tell it's human not not because you know they're freaking shaped like human because it because this, yeah. clearly the <laughs> second individual was counting and monkeys yeah. don't count you need to explain why this is mimicking patterns. Yes. So yeah. they're clearly human, uh, and that's yeah. all, and that's all and the some information. Some of them are closer, yeah. and some of them are further. And he's like jumping yeah. to match it. Like, oh, this one's a bit further, so it jumps over to match it. Yeah, it could be. I agree. Too. One is mimicking the other one, but I believe yeah. that the older kid is mimicking the younger one because the younger one's feet look properly spaced out, like their stride looks properly spaced out, and then the stride of the bigger one is way way shallower than it should be it's a lot you know it's not as long, like the stride length and isn't as long as it should be so i almost want to say like the older child is mimicking the younger one but you're definitely right there's mimicry going on that's on yeah. point but, but it's certainly they're not next to each other so there has to be mimicry because you know look at this it's the fuck, you have to just say this person is like right next to each other you know the top view this is the top view of the what's going on here trying to paint it so people get get what i'm saying sure and i put the uh that photos doesn't make any of... sense what is it so uh, i was gonna say for them to be next to each other doesn't make any sense because you know they will have to be like some sort of side me twins situation and, but that's all the information we can gather from this you know it's just you know and two individuals walking by but you know who knows what this is? I think it might be a dog or something. But that's no, all the it's more like an antelope animal. Yeah. And, well, it's a the, clove. Is it? Because the strides are. Are they are they running in the same direction? The antelope and all, and that even those smaller prints are, are probably not an antelope. <laughs> but there's even smaller ones there. So, I mean, you got all these things. If they're all running in the same direction, they're running away from something. So yeah, volcanic eruption, and there's often water in mixed in like look at mount st helens how much water was mixed into that eruption and, well, we can, and well i shared the original well, literature in the chat so it'll reveal exactly what that other individual is that animal that walks well, through there well it so, could be you know it could be it certainly does look like they're going the same direction you know yeah. depending, depending on what 
you know, which way these these prints right here are facing. Sure. But that's all the information you get. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I mean, it's pretty obvious to me now looking at these that they're so close together that they probably did walk through at different times, you know. Mimicking yeah, unless you, like you said, they must have been Siamese twins. Otherwise, <laughs> well, they could have been a kid walking along later after that other one had already walked through and decided to mimic the footprints he was walking along to pass the time. Sure, yeah, that's where could I'm at as well. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly yeah. where I'm at right now. Yeah. yeah, where I'm at is like those the uh, the older kids' footprints are pretty shallow, so like the length of the stride is not as long as it should be if they were just walking regularly. So if there's any mimicry going on, I'd say the larger individual is mimicking the smaller one's stride, See, which is interesting because that shows that that's also a child, which is what the lengths show up as. Because that'd be like someone. Uh, let's see. Yeah, seven, seven to eight years old. Well, they're certainly not in a hurry, because if they're you, not, you, they're yeah. not running. So you know, this is leisure time for them. So sure. So, but that's all we can gather from this, and I don't think you know they're clearly human. Any anybody deny that they're, they're not human? They're, it's you know, it has has to propose that now monkeys can count, which is ridiculous, and I think that's yeah. what America's position is. You know, the counting monkeys. Yep. That's her bowing down to the human evolution narrative. They're just like, these footprints are so old that it has to be Australopithecine because according to us, there was no humans back then. And so ever since this discovery, Australopithecine have had absolutely human looking footprints, which is what we're pointing out to Andy. But yeah, man, I think you're dead on. And it was really, I mean, thanks for pointing out how there's definitely mimicry going on. They're walking, the footprints are parallel. And just right with each other in the pathways. That's a great point. Like we're really getting a good idea of it, but I think all three of us, we might not well, agree. We got the video on again. When yeah, yeah, we could finish that video because it's just Erica talking. But we definitely proved that Erica's wrong. That it's definitely definitely looks like human footprints there. They are human. Because if, if they're not human, she's going to have to explain why is their counting evolve? Why is their mimicry evolve? Mimicry evolves counting. Yeah. All right. And they're Here basically go, playing. I mean. All right. Here yep. you go. I'll all right, just, I'll, I'll, I'll actually, I'll play it because there's not long. You want me to just to play it because I've got to go get my out? I'm just going to hop out because that's all I got. All right. You're out of here. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks for hopping on. That was a great yeah, point. All right. Do you want? Do you want me to? Oh, uh, I'm gonna play it, uh, and I'm just gonna get my. Yeah, dog play out. on and uh, take care of your business and stuff, brother. Okay. All right. Let it be. All right. Yeah, it's playing. All right. I'm gonna go get him out. I won't be long. Right. Okay. So again, I just want to reinstate that the only difference at this site of these footprints that they claim that they're not human is the size. They say they're There's just a little bit smaller there, than average the human. Trapway, but this trapway is probably not Australopithecus afarensis. We know this based off the bio. No, let it play on. I said what I had to say. You're just saying that they were smaller than the average footprint and uh, the, the average human footprint, but really what is an average they say that it's that the child's that age or this age could be any age. They don't know what age it is. Could be a bloody midget. <laughs> One of them could be a, could be a, a midget, mate. Could be a who knows? They don't know. It could be a full adult midget. Yeah, like we always say, the them. the spectrum of humanity, the variation in humanity, the skeletal structure is so wide. You don't really know what you got, you know. So, you know, I saw that full-grown woman in New Norfolk, and she was only three and a half, four foot tall. She was so short, like tiny. I couldn't believe it. And sure. her husband was seven foot something tall. It was crazy. I just thought, wow. And she was like a, you know, mid late forties, early fifties or something when I saw her, or early fifties, maybe even a sixties, fifties or sixties <laughs> or something. She was. <laughs> that's pretty small. Anyway, let's get on with this. I got to go get my dog out. So. Okay. All right, brother. See you in a minute. Mechanics, and we'll get to that. 
Um, Then they go into like a pretty decent summary here of like what actually happened, where the tracks are found, how old they are. The Laetoli footprints are found in Laetoli, which is in Tanzania. As I know here, they were found in 1976 by Leakeys, and they look pretty human. They look human-like. That's what do we mean when we say human? -like? Like, well, an inline big toe looks like it has three arches in the feet things like that. And we didn't know of anything at the time that these were found with any certainty that had that kind of foot morphology. We'll get there, though. Um, 3.7 million years old. Talk about how long they are, who they were, three individuals traveling in, an, in sort of an ash fall that had happened due to a volcanic eruption nearby, covered the landscape in ash, and then three Australopiths pits are walking along leaving the tracks. Uh, the Lytoli footprints were found more than 1,000 miles away from where the fossil remains of Lucy's kind were found, and they were dated to nearly half a million years older than Lucy, yet Johansson strongly asserted these footprints must have been made by his species. They're just imposing malice on these guys as if it's some kind of sneaky cabal of individuals who are trying to push evolution despite evidence to the contrary. I know that this is exactly what they think, right? Um, and they're just willing to, to pack this chapter full of mistruths in order to make it seem that way, which really pisses me off. But we'll, uh, we'll continue on. I've got a lot to say and, and I want to get through all of it. In this section here where they show the late Tully footprints and they give a little description of them, they say that a number of anatomists who examined the footprints have noted that they look identical to those of modern humans. There's no source here, and there's no source for a reason. No anatomist looked at the Elitoli footprints and said, these are identical to modern humans. That did not happen. Mary Leakey, when she first stumbled across them, said that they looked remarkably human, but no one proposed that these were anatomically modern human. No mistake about it certainly not anatomists. And I suspect that if they had a quote that supported that, they would have cited it. So they continue onward. They use the word palo expert again, which that's why I have the T here to combat the, uh, the acid flooding my gastrointestinal system. Yeah, what does she want? A time machine? <laughs> anyway. I mean, there's, you know, here we're just pointing out the baboon bone that they discovered in Lucy again. Um, yeah. And the news article confirming it. There's actually a few of these. But this is my favorite one, written by Hannah Osborne. Due to the discovery of the baboon vertebrae, the previously supposed seven or 47 remains of a single individual has become 46, meaning there's now less evidence for Lucy than before 2015. Yeah. Let's move on to the Laetoli footprints. So here's a picture of a Laetoli footprint. And at first glance, I, as well as you, would look at this and say, wow, like as these guys in contested bones are about to know, if you saw this on the beach, you wouldn't do a double take. You wouldn't think that there was some crazed big foot running around. You wouldn't do a double take. You wouldn't think that there was some crazed big foot running around. You would just say, that's kind of a weird footprint. It does Sasquatches. look indistinguishable from a modern human footprint. It has an inline helix. It has three arches. It has a heel, right? I agree, but Erica. This it does, does not look indistinguishable from a modern human modern wow. Because you have to run a biomechanics analysis to actually figure that out. That is where they fall intermediately, how they carry it that weight. The morphology looks modern, which is why it drives me crazy that they get so pissed off when we portray Lucy like this. 
with the, the inline helix. Of course, they, they don't associate those because they just don't know about the feet, evidently. That's why they call this the Lucy chapter and not just an Australopithecus afarensis chapter. Okay, so they finish uh, quote mining and then they say, And that's just, you know, my amazing video editing skills where I double, double whammy it. With the discovery of the baboon remain, the utter lack of more complete supposed afferences finds known reconstruction of the ilium pelvic blade and hoaxes of the past. Aren't you just a bit skeptical? Shouldn't the fact that it took over 30 years to identify an obvious baboon monkey remain in the unarguably most famous supposed transitional form between tree dwelling apes and humankind make a thinking person skeptical of the field of research, paleoanthropology? Uh, men died believing that this conglomeration was a single individual before a monkey bone was identified in it. It doesn't seem like careful analysis of these supposed human ancestors is being done. If it took that long to identify a monkey remain in it, maybe those involved don't want to know. She wants to talk about some sneaky cabal. What else could it be? I mean, you've got leaky. I'm just saying it all seems very leaky to me. I mean, suspect. Anyway. And there's the end of the video. So here you have Erica claiming that nobody would say that they look just like modern human footprints. And then she says, well, it's not like you would think there was a foot, like a Sasquatch running or a Bigfoot. You can do a double take running, you know? And then, then she comes around and says, wow, they do really look like modern human footprints on the same video. It's a beautiful thing. I would be back. Uh, I'm still, I'm right. still getting the dog out. Uh, I would be back. Oh, I haven't abandoned you for take a while. <laughs> Uh, all right brother yeah this is the ancestor to all of you know the primates in their narrative and it's based on uh, two bones so they get this magical imaginary creature from two remains and this is the photo that jason was showing earlier so yeah i mean it's a plastic fantastic ever-changing theory of evolution and, you know, if they decide that humans didn't come out of Africa and said they might have come out of Asia eventually, they're going to have to throw out all of those discoveries from Central and South and East Africa that are claimed to be our missing links because then they'd be looking for I, missing links in Asia because that's exactly what happened with Europe. Yeah, go on. I, I'll be back, sounds like cross between um, uh, Swedish and, and Scottish. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> sound anything <laughs> like Artie, but anyway. <laughs> All right. And as Jason said before, you know, the variety of humankind, you know, there's so much variation with the humankind. Um, Kramer and Axel here, these two guys, um, they used to go on tour each other, like tour with each other, and um, actually make quite a bit of money at a show. They had a whole act set up, you know, they made a lot of money together and he was just like, he was very tall and he, the other one was very short. So, and just imagine like with the size of that skeletal system, it's just, there's so much of a range out there. And when you're in paleoanthropology, you've got to expect to find remains of anything that's ever existed on this planet, you know? So, they're finding things that don't fit the average modern human skeletal system and then claiming uh, transition from these finds. And that's the whole of how they form the paleoanthropological phylogenetic tree. Um, and they've invented many uh, species of Australop Australopithecine, okay, by splitting up these uh, finds into different groups, you know. And some of them will argue that other groups aren't actual groups. Like you have an issue even with in the Homo erectus and the Homo ergaster, where they believe that these two groups of the Homo, these hypothetical pre-human humans, you know, where that they might actually be the same group. So you have what you, what you call groupers and splitters in the paleoanthropological community, you know. And, I mean, I've asked uh, Erica about this in the past, and she said 
that she's a grouper and a splitter. You know, there's some times when she like she basically believes whatever the heck she wants to, I suppose. Yeah. Yep. Now, as far as Prometheus, this little foot find, Erica claims that it's an Africanus and not a Prometheus, even though the founders, the discoverers themselves, uh, they claim that it's a Prometheus, a different kind of Australomythicus altogether than the Afarensis or the Africanus. And the reason for this is the skull. And the features of the skull do not match the Africanus. So even though Erica wants to claim that the Prometheus, the little foot, is an Africanus, this just isn't the case because the Africanus has very chimpanzee-looking uh, skull, whereas the Prometheus has a very gorilla-looking skull. In fact, I think it is a gorilla skull. And when it comes to the Africanus and the Afarensis, I'd say those look very uh, chimpanzee. And it's just as simple as that. Those are chimpanzee and gorilla skulls. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty obvious what's going on is that these claim hominids are actually mixes of multiple species, multiple individuals, but even human and ape remains, okay? So human and tree-dwelling ape remains mixed into a box. Now, if you're going to come up with proof for evolution, especially human evolution, they're going to have to do a little bit better than that. So until they come up with a decent skeleton, one that's been found, you know, maybe even close to itself, like all the, all the pieces are found together in one place, until they have something, some better evidence, yeah, it's still a missing link. So there's where we stand. Um, I think that the three creationists that we had here, we all agreed whether we about whether we disagree about how or when the prints were made, um, we all agree that they look very human. Okay, so looking at the prints, it's easy to say that these appear to be human footprints. However, Erica still resists. She resists that fact. She's in denial. Okay, because her personal religion, her paleoanthropological narrative, her religion doesn't allow her to know that there were humans that walked through this lair. Even though she believes it's 3.7 million years old, this lay totally footprint trail, the layers that these are in, that this trail is on. Even though she believes that, she has to say that they're not human because it doesn't fit her narrative. Because here you have on this chart, Okay, that's Africanus, so we need the middle. There's your Afarensis. There's Lucy. Okay. And you're going back 3.7 million years. Yeah, there's no humans around then, see? So when you look at the 3.7 million year mark, that's Laetoli. So that's like almost at the beginning of um, the hypothetical time of this Lucy kind. Okay, this Afarensis. Yeah, and then the human line doesn't even appear according to this. Or the homo line doesn't even appear until 2.4 million years ago. So, yeah. These footprints are way too early for the uh, human evolution narrative, at least as far as humans or even our ancestors. So. Oh, I like you too, Robin. Thank you. That's very nice. I hope that the uh, mic is still working because I wouldn't know either way at this point. <laughs> I mean, and again, you know, they're claiming to have hundreds of individuals of each one of these species when really there's seven um, partial skeletons to speak of. So that's a common misconception. And while it's it's often the mantra okay, in the evolution community, in the evolutionist community here on YouTube, there are not hundreds of skeletons of these. 
there's these seven partial skeletons and the second most complete is Lucy and she's hardly complete. So don't let them, you know, lie to you. I mean, it really is. It's just ingenuous because especially Erica knows better. She knows how many finds there actually are. And she shouldn't be pushing false narratives onto the public community, whether she's working on her degree or not. She needs to be truthful and stick with the consensus instead of her opinions, pushing them as the paleoanthropological consensus. So, but that's my opinion. Oh, man. And I'll turn the thing on and my dog's drinking again. All right. Sounds like a camel. No, no, camels suck it out. I can barely they? I can barely hear the dog in the background, though. But They suck the water good. out. They don't slap it up. Yeah. Like so what do you horses. say? Uh, do you want to call it a night, or are you uh, no, probably getting hungry for dinner? Dog. No, I'm right. That's All right. Uh, my dog drinking there, buddy. If he ever stops, drinks. Freaking hell, man. I think a camel would freaking drown to death drinking that much. <laughs> So that's our exhaustive, you know, review of the Latoli site G footprints. Uh, these trails over there in Tanzania. And, uh, you know, it's our opinion that they were made by humans and human children. Because if the only difference is that they were smaller than the average humans, but could fit into a woman's size four, which obviously is not the right dimensions, maybe for the larger set, but... This would also be like a male that's, you know, five, no, I'm sorry, eight to nine years old. Seven to eight years old, I think it was, so. Yeah. It's just, it's just so obviously that they're human footprints, and you have Erica straight up denying it, so just wanted to point that out. Yeah, oh, well, well, this is the thing. If you look at, tell me, go and look at a photo of Lucy and tell me, is there any difference between Lucy's foot and a human foot? And then they say that those feet look like human feet, uh, but they're not human feet. So can you see the 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 word salad, as some people say? <laughs> <laughs> it is word salad. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you basically have a creature here that has a human bottom and an ape top. It's laughable at best. If this was ever a real animal, then Sasquatches must be real. Human legs. So. It's no Frankenstein. It's, it, I call it Frankenite. It's 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 it's, it's, <laughs> it's Frankenite. It's it really is Frankenite. Okay. It really is, and that's what these uh, that's what those skeletons are. They're just Frankenstein's, basically different individuals collected and put into a box and then claimed to be from the same individual when in fact a lot of these skeletons are known to be of multiple individuals but then they're all claimed to be from the same population so you know when they connect all the pieces together it's fine Bloody. so well, they really are you. frankenstein oh. they're a conglomerate a uh, a composite oh, I'm, skeleton. I'm 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 turning into a wino I'm rolling up cigarette butts from my friend's cigarette butts, <laughs> but I'm not doing it because I have to. I'm doing it because I like it. I like the the tobacco in the cigarette butt because it's it's a lot stronger. It's got all the tar sure. and the nicotine and all the goodies, you know, down in there all concentrated in. So when you smoke, it's really full of flavor and it's really sort of like gives you a good hit. <laughs> Uh, that, <laughs> so I do it because for the flavor. I like the you just get the burnt stuff off, and and the rest is just gravy. Yeah, I I like to I smoke my tobacco like, like, in, in elaborate ways myself. You know? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I'm just and I make the butts pipes. out of rolls. <laughs> I get that old toilet roll. I rip the, <laughs> the the one layer off, and then I just cut a little strip out and roll it up like a cigarette butt, and then I got a. A toilet roll cigarette. Uh, see, my, I'm environmentally friendly. <laughs> my my cigarettes have got recycled toilet um, <laughs> toilet roll, uh, tobacco, and paper only. So when I throw them away, I should never get fined because it's just natural. It, it'll be sure. great very quickly. Well, I'll tell you, I was there when I was walking around and around and picking up the cigarette butts. And I mean, it was, oh yeah, everyone. Yeah, this is the only ones available. You know, all their life. 
Can't we do what she kids, had it, I used to walk around midway shops picking up cigarette butts. <clears throat> We had these shops just, I used to live at the plate at 128 Lovell Road Eastwood. Now it's 128A and 128B because my sister split it up. They moved from there. That's why I can tell tell you where it was because it doesn't even exist anymore, that address. So it's 128 Lovell Road Eastwood. And that was like a long time ago. It's long gone. And and across the road is Midway Shops, a shopping centre. And it's an open air shopping centre and everyone used to smoke. And I'd walk around, pick it up. Like we'd get like 30, 40 cigarette butts and sit down and break them all open and get a great big, freaking pouch full of tobacco yeah, dirty little oh yeah grunge. get some rolling papers and you're all set hmm. i don't mm-hmm. do that anymore i wouldn't pick up a cigarette butt from someone else only from people that i know that haven't got diseases <laughs> oh robin so, yeah. robin says she's got a jewel i don't need to anyway i just like it I'm don't lose that jewel it. robin that's that's rough i'm a weirdo yeah you know, I've made for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we going to talk about, yeah. Jason? What do you want to talk about, man? Now we're we're pretty much covered that topic. I just cigarette oh. buttology. I guess. No, yeah. I mean, that's no, what we have moved no. into. No, we talked just, about the speed of light last episode. Mm. Uh, well, erosion. Erosion is a big problem. Sure. I mean, if you look at the, if you go onto the government websites like Australian government and that, and we got a big problem with erosion in Australia and the topsoil gets blown away in the desert. Like we get massive dust storms and blow away all the topsoil, most of you blowing it away all more and more all the time. We've got, you know, a coast right around that side of the coast, constantly eroding. We've got massive storms, floods, rivers, you know, so the amount of erosion that we get and like from agricultural land and, and then look at the, that sort of those statistics, uh, and just general erosion statistics in general, even the slowest rates of erosion would be insane. You'd have to, like, you've got dinosaurs yeah. in the layer, right? Well, so dinosaur got, footprints even. Yeah, but you got dinosaurs in the layer, but all of this would be gone if you looked at how much erosion would occur over 75 million years. And what they say is that it had just eroded away down to base rock. Sure. And then build up again, but... If it did that, if we go by continental uplift and as it uplifts, it erodes away and then uplifts and erodes away, well, all the dinosaur bones should be pretty much redeposited or, or either gone or, or redeposited the fossils. They'd be worn away because, you know, when they get out into the open, they, they degrade really quickly from carbonic acid and, you know, from the rain and, and stuff like oh, yeah. that. So we're finding these things in situ, in place, and, and according to the erosion rate and continental and uplift, even the slowest uplift rates, if you look at them over, you know, I mean, not just the slowest ones, you've got to average it out because they're not all ultra slow. So you'd have almost no fossils left anywhere, no fossil layers left anywhere, really. They'd all be gone. You know, I think every 12 million years, if you look at the Mississippi, the amount of water that flows down the Mississippi is that crystal clear as i watched someone say once or is it muddy and gunky and washing billions of tons of mud out into the ocean and and you got and then you got thousands of <clears throat> rivers and streams and every time it rains you know they're constantly washing stuff out then it rains and they wash even more um over long periods of time we've got examples where entire chunks of coastline and houses have just disappeared into the ocean in one storm yeah. <laughs> and, sure. and we're supposed to have had these layers here for 75 million years and they've still got the a lot of them have got the bones in there as they were left like the um, ashley phosphate beds you've got like a, a six or eight inch layer that runs all the way from somewhere in montana i think in the united states all the way over to canada sort of thing <laughs> and it's just full of um whales porpoises seals mastodons uh duck dinosaurs uh sharks cats dog bones rhinoceros bones uh it, it all mixed together and and like they all just died and got mixed together and they actually believe that the phosphate layer itself is made out of actual bone so, like, this is, the, you know, you imagine if a whole lot of animals died and started to rot and just all swirled around and got buried together. They're just all jumbled together. I mean, you got modern dogs and cats mixed in with uh, hadrosaur dinosaurs, which are hadrosaurs supposed to be from 120 million years ago, right? 
isn't that the duck bill and <laughs> so you got 120 million year old dinosaurs mixed in with dogs and cats and whales and porpoises and rhinoceroses and <coughs> and stuff so yeah anyway um sorry see science was keep cutting you off oh no you're good you're i was you're on a roll man i was just i was just kicking back but yeah uh yeah yeah i mean to me like even i mean the dinosaurs being there still is one thing but even their footprints are there and their footprints are usually found by bodies of water and rivers yeah and they can't be redeposited they can't be eroded away and then redeposited right so the, the, the dinosaur tracks are the ultimate of the you know the example and there's just no way that, that and then as soon as they get exposed they break down straight away from carbonic acid you know mm -hmm. from and rain, rain yeah know. erosion yeah yeah and that's carbonic yeah so like these get carbon. uncovered and then they disappear in 10 years you know what i mean yeah and then we're supposed to believe that these dinosaur footprints were made 65 plus million years ago makes no sense it's just carbonic acid is just carbon dioxide diluted into water that's all it is and and it, it just literally breaks them up really quick so you, you couldn't have um these these in situ fossils all over the oh, world it's isn't the magpie the australian bird or something yeah uh okay i think it's it, we got it from britain originally okay robin asked if you've ever been attacked by a magpie and that's yes. why yeah but <laughs> yes. i used to <laughs> All the all the pussies used to walk along with uh with with ice cream buckets, ice cream containers on their heads to stop them from from attacking them. Whereas uh, I used to just walk along and ignore it. But my friend here, he actually got his head split open by one. I heard about it, but I thought it was wow. just I thought it was rubbish. But he got his head split open by one, and I just used to walk to school and let him dive at me and just walk along and just ignore him. Didn't even care i think you know after a while i don't know though i have felt their wings get close to me but i never got pecked on the head i think i felt a couple of little my hair lift up and stuff but nothing major i just don't understand why you know anyway they went around started shooting them the coppers years later and and, and i think why shoot them you know it's, people have become so soft i mean i suppose yeah. a kid could lose an eye one out of every hundred billion times a magpie's ever dived down at somebody one one person out of a hundred million billion dives might lose an eye so are oh, we got to shoot all mag shoot the magpies in those areas idiots <laughs> anyway <clears throat> that's like yeah. the turkeys here in western new york man you gotta watch out they'll jump right out of a tree come right at you yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, like, they're, they're like a geese, like geese. You know, geese sure. are really. Oh yeah, they'll really... chase you around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, when very I was territorial, kid, those geese. <laughs> when I was a kid, I was patting this dog, and it was a grumpy old dog, and it and it was a really old boxer dog, and it bit me on the ass, and I was only a real little kid. I think I was about because I was walking when I was six months old. So by the time I was two, I was like fully walking and running and stuff like. <clears throat> anyway, I was about two or three, and this this dog, I was patting this dog, and it bit me on the ass. And so oh. I, I I ran around while Mum was talking to the person and or going off the dog, and I ran around and bit the dog on the ass, and 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 then it started chasing me around this bin. My mum told me that story, so I know it's true. And it started chasing me around. <laughs> that's all, that's a great story. That's good. <laughs> and she's there whacking the dog and trying to grab me, and I'm just running around because it's an old dog, so I can keep in front of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Stuff. I don't know what I. Now you've that. you've got dinosaur footprints in Australia. I know that you guys have some of the best dinosaur 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 footprint sites. Yeah, uh, in the world. Yeah. 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 But they're yeah, all by the sea, right? All, all the sure. all the layers would just be gone. There's no point in even trying to show that sort of stuff. It's it's erosion. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can I suppose get up a dock and have a look. Um, that's at a couple of things. Let's see uh, erosion. erosion. Yeah, and when you and when you look at the erosion over just the last couple hundred years, it's like I'm supposed to believe 
that these dinosaur footprints have been here for 65 million years of weathering. It makes no sense. With uplift, I mean, they're, they're believing that like whole Pangean like continents have appeared in this time and, and, and split up again and then come back together again and split up again. Like continental drift has happened all this time. And yet they believe that these dinosaur footprints have existed for 65 million years. It just boggles my mind, but yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, if their if their uh, narrative is true, then there would be no dinosaur footprints, and you'd think dinosaur footprints would be kind of something they'd need to explain, but I never hear them really explain them, or the problem of them existing with the concept of erosion, you know. Now, as creationists, we believe in um, erosion can happen quickly, okay? So there's this uniformitarianism, or I think that's what, what you it's called, right? can happen, it does happen quickly. Right, yeah, it's we believe we in, say the, in that there's catastrophic events <laughs> where the erosion will, will occur much faster. We're like, I think it's called universitarianism, I don't know, Ter universal, I don't know. But it's where they believe that the the erosion happens at a constant rate over the yeah, years, it was over the eons. Universal universitarianism. I don't know, but it's a concept in geology where it's a constant rate of change across the planet over the millions of years. You know, and it's like to us, it's like wow, all these things can be explained in ca catastrophic events. You know, mainly the flood, the amount of erosion that occurred during the flood would be yeah. enough to explain all the observable erosion that we see around the planet, and in my opinion. Then wind, you know, you have wind erosion, water erosion. It says, like, why are there still dinosaur footprints? 65 million years is a very long time. 6,000 years is a very long time. <laughs> but 65 million years, and we've still got footprints from these, these mammoths, these, these giants. So that to me is some of the best evidence that dinosaurs uh, lived in the not so distant past because their prints are still here. Um, they found juicy dinosaur remains. You know, it's like they're finding more and more evidence that the dinosaurs were recent. So I think that the evolution narrative is going to change again to where a lot of the dinosaurs are living to more recent times. So. Uniformitism. Yeah. Uniformitism. Yeah. yeah, see. Yeah, see. Robin knows. So as creationists, we believe in catastrophic events causing a lot of erosion very quickly in different periods of time during, you know, Earth's history. Where in geology, there's the concept of uniformitism. Uniformitism? Uniformitarianism. <laughs> Yeah, uniformitarianism. uniformitarianism. So, yeah. Yes. So this concept is like it, it happens slow rate. You know, these tiny rivers are creating the canyons. You know, like these tiny rivers are clearing out uh, just the entire, emptying out that entire canyon of, of debris. And that to me is kind of like, really? So they believe this tiny river did it in millions of years instead of believing that this canyon was created quickly in a catastrophic flood event you know so there's two different ideas going on and the other one is really hit yeah you there the creationist view is you hidden from the, from the public i'd say um i'm just trying to find uh... <clears throat> Just trying to find so, a picture. Yeah. That's my dog in the background. I should. Um, right. I'm just. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's some erosion. Ah, oh, oh, here we go. This is what I've been looking for. This is what I've been looking for. All right. Here we go. Okay, let's have a look at some erosion. So, okay, uh, and a 
right, let's. So here we go. Ooh. I mean, that's from oh, look one at the store. different kinds of erosion. That's cool. <clears throat> yeah, but look, that's that's from like one storm. So that, sure. that that's just one storm has taken that much dirt away. There would be thousands of tons of dirt along that 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 dried up riverbed. I mean, it's obviously in a part of Australia where it's mostly dry, but then it has massive storms and it just cuts out. So that one's from just one storm. Here's, uh, hang on, let's have a look and see what it says. Oh, anyway, these are all just the different types of erosion. This all happened like immediately in one hit. This wasn't just, this is like a storm and then the water built up and started running in a little trickle and just cut all this away, like in one storm. And you got to remember 75 million years. So you got to remember uplift. Yeah, look at this. Look at that. The whole cliffside wow. crumbled away. Look at that, just falling away right along the the base of the cliff it's 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 just crumbling away and breaking away and 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 that's gonna like 75 million years and it's just disappearing before our eyes i mean look at that that's 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 where waters burst through look at the size of that house and look at the size of the water compared to where the water's cutting through the rock it's literally just cutting a channel through the rock sort of stuff like eventually when it it did like the ice and that i mean it, it the ice moves and slowly breaks up and grinds and cuts into the rock and and that had to have look at that i mean that the way that's frozen it looks like it was running when it was frozen it just looks it looks like it it's interesting sure okay let's address Maybe this that. chat here too uh if the flood wasn't in the bible would you think there was a flood jason uh um uh, unless someone presented the concept to to somebody nobody would and and here look at this uh, uh look at this of course not uh of course i wouldn't believe there was a flood uh, i mean I, you wouldn't be able to put it together you would, from different pictures and you just have to you'd only have one narrative or one thing to choose from yeah i'd say if it wasn't in the Bible, I would have never investigated it. But knowing oh, look at what I We've know now houses. about Crumbling the into the ocean. for the flood and like the canyons and gorges across the planet, you know, because like a global flood like that is going to have global evidence. Yeah, so, yeah, that's right. But anyway, look at this. Look at this. This sure. is how is it, houses crumbling into the ocean. This is how fast it's it's disappearing. The land. And, and and they want us to believe that it's been around for seven all the layers are got 70 still there's deep layers there with 75 million year old dinosaur bones in them come on man yeah and then also you've got the and and then they say well uplift um accounts for a lot of this well if it was uplifting you'd have all new rock well how do you get like bones deposited in solid rock from uplift like did the bones how do the bones get down into rock where dinosaurs never walked on before or never even saw or long like it was deep down in the earth when they were around sure so how did they get all of these bones and 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 shellfish bones and you know trillions, into those into trillions. the cliff side there right yeah trillions sure. and trillions of, of shellfish you know all and we're watching earth. it break <laughs> away into the sea like all over the earth all over the earth at the shoreline we see this occurring we see whole Not just mountains that. being it's just the shoreline it's, it's in the desert when you have a dust like the wind blows or in the dry area not just the desert anywhere here in tasmania it rains a lot we get dry dusty times of the year and the wind blows and there's just dust everywhere in the air it's blowing all the dust out into the ocean you can literally see it blowing it into the ocean so it's 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 wind erosion like we got every time a car drives up our road they must kick up probably a couple of hundred kilos of dust gone couple hundred kilos of dust couple of course there's thousands of tons hundreds of thousands of tons of dust out there so it's going to take a long time but the road does wear away it just blows away in summer in the hot dry, dusty area it literally just blows away from cars and then you got the wind erosion like on on semi-arid areas where it's like you know semi forests and stuff like that blowing billions of tons hundreds of billions of tons of earth out into the ocean so you've got this sort of erosion you've got the wind erosion you've got uh storm erosion uh yeah it's you're in deep trouble man like here we go here we go look at this look at that <laughs> that's that's a look at that much i never had 
Wow, yeah. Of course, I'll just say that that's it. I'll just say that they're rebuilding it. But, and again, uh, this is shoreline erosion. Yeah. Yeah, but it's they're fast. not. They're not rebuilding that. That was actually a see that's 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 like just a right away. Yeah. Here here in <laughs> West Well maybe yeah, they here. rebuild it or whatever. That's what they'll say. But look at that. There you go. There's your dust. <laughs> now you think in that dust cloud how many hundreds of thousands of tons of 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 soil is just blowing away up into the atmosphere and then blowing out and settling on the ocean. And how many dust storms do we have every year? Millions of them around the world every year. Sure. Little little dust storms, big dust storms, like little, you know, wherever there's wind in the Northern Territory, there was a nonstop dust storm during summer. You just had, like, the, you get the time of year where it's all flat out there. It's just flat as, oh, so flat out there. You just, you got roads <laughs> out there where you can see 30, 30 kilometres long, straights. Mm -hmm. Like, 15, I think I counted the longest straight I counted, I think was 17 kilometers long. Just dead straight for 17 kilometers. Dead straight. Yeah, that's, that's, that's flat. flat. <coughs> and and you that's just flat. Flat. certain times of the year in summer when it's red hot, it gets up to like 50 degrees centigrade. It's 127 degrees, um, 53 degrees centigrade. It's about 127 Fahrenheit. And at, right out in the desert, because all of the main centres in the Northern Territory of Australia are building the coolest places, like Alice Springs, um, Tennant Creek, Catherine and Darwin are building the coolest places. So when you mm. look at their temperatures, you're only seeing the coolest parts of the Northern Territory. They're deliberately built there because they're the coolest parts, and they're still red hot. But you go like just 10 k's outside or 40 k's outside of any one of those towns, and you're in an area wow. where you're getting 127 Fahrenheit, 53 degrees, and uh, <laughs> Celsius. And, it's, and then you get, and it's so dry, and then you get the wind blow, and you can imagine there's just dust everywhere for hundreds of square kilometres, and that would be blowing up hundreds of millions of tonnes of dust straight out into the ocean. And, <laughs> and, and that's been going on for how long, people? Of course, you know, so they will say so many 40,000 years ago it was all forest and, and that, and then the Aboriginals came here and they started burning off the forest because they couldn't walk freely through it so they just burnt it wherever they couldn't walk and they kept burning it and it kept and you burn something enough it then slowly turned into desert that's that's, tell you. that's what the claim i is. believe the whole center of australia they blame, was forest they blame like that, that on right? the aboriginals uh, well it is it is because what happened is is they say that the, the aboriginals traditionally are the ones that do the burn offs and they say the reason why we're having these big bushfires in australia is because the aboriginals aboriginals aren't burning off anymore like they used to and so that's we know that for a fact huh. and 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 so yeah. they, that's and we know and they say that the center of australia used to be forest and we also know that if you keep burning something like a forest and it doesn't get a chance to recover and you just keep burning it because those forests, I've walked through forests like that, like what what, what it would have been like, I should say. I've walked through forests, what it would, and they've got these native vines with these spines on them and growing all through the trees and vine. And it's just to walk through and thick as anything. And to walk through that would be a nightmare. So what they used to do, and rightly so, that's what I'd do if I was them and didn't have machinery and that. I'd, they just put a, they wait till it was dry and set light to it. And then they could, and then the regrowth would would create, um, you know, as it regrows, it, it it's got all new shoots, which which sparks animals to produce more babies, and so they get more food around because they were hunter gatherers. They never had uh, agriculture ever, the Aboriginals. Anyway, but but, but anyway, look, the, the the thing is, I'm getting off the track. The the, the thing is here. You've got literally hundreds of millions of tons of in you know, the center of Australia, uh, and and it's it, like Australia's mostly desert, right? So you've got like just this little green um, fringe around the outside of this great giant massive continent or island. It's just an entire continent. It's massive, and it's not an island. It's an island nation, but it's a continent. It's huge, and it's as big as North America. It's as big as wow. the, like the USA, it, about in land mass, around about as big, a little bit smaller, but about the same size, close sort of thing. And it's mostly all desert. So you can imagine how many hundreds of millions of tons every year blow out into the ocean. And then you've got to have this happening for 
hundreds of millions of years, you'd have to have continental uplift to 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 account. Sure. For that thing. But then what happens to the fossils when they get exposed? They they immediately start to break down from just carbon in the air and and yeah. heat and drying and cracking and being blown around and sand being blown against them will 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 wear them away. Like they stop people from walking on Uluru which is um, what they call Ayers Rock. The Aboriginals, Aboriginal name for it is Uluru. They stopped people walking on it because they said people are wearing it away. But I've been out there, right, in that in that area, right, and and I've been in the – when the wind blows really hard, the sand blows so hard it stings your skin, right? So you've got this rock in the middle of Australia, Ayers Rock, Uluru, um, and, and and it's spelt phonetically, sort of with all U's and R's and L's. It's pretty easy to spell Uluru, and 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 it's just like poking up out of this flat desert, and and it's being buffeted by these winds, like that are literally sandblasting it away, and they're blaming the rock wearing away on people walking over it because like the tracks where people would walk would start to get deeper over time a little bit. And they say it's sacred and all this sort of stuff. Well, they better erect a big wall around it, and 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 you know, <laughs> to stop the sand from sandblasting it from the desert. Because if you live there, you'd see how many, how much of the year the wind blows, and it's just constantly being buffeted and sandblasted and stuff. So it's wearing away anyway, you geniuses. But anyway, they they, they say it's a sacred this and that and all that. But they're thinking of opening it up again. Um, for tourists, they were at one stage they were thinking about it, and I thought, yeah, yeah, the almighty dollar speaks more than the sacred, you know, site. But no anyway. doubt, no <laughs> doubt, it always comes down yeah. to the money, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I you've mean, got all that. Yeah, sorry, mate, go on, apologize. No, no, you go ahead. I mean, I was just gonna say, like, uh, you know, to me, some of the best evidence for the global flood are the canyons and the gorges across the planet. Like I said, a global flood is going to have global evidence, okay? And, you know, uh, Robin asks if uh, we'd believe in the global flood if it wasn't in the Bible. Yeah. It might never looked into it if I wouldn't have I heard do. about it. You know what I mean? But now after knowing it, uh, about it and researching the evidence for it, like these canyons and gorges, um, which are usually explained by, like, ice ages, and to me, that's not a great explanation for the gorges and the canyons across the planet and the ancient super lakes. No, 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 it's not. It's not. When Look, I'll tell you just quickly. When you've got sure. all of these canyons and gorges where rivers are running through them right across the United States, they say that they wore away over millions of years. The problem with that narrative is they had to have worn away quickly, right? And the reason is, is because each one of those canyons are a V-shape. Right when when water flows around bends, it doesn't cut a perfect V shape. It undercuts and gets all different shapes. If you look right, there's so many thousands of, of of rivers out in the deserts and stuff around. You know, like Grand Canyon and Arizona and all out through those deserts and around America. If you look at those things, almost all of them are V shaped. So they had to be cut out like fast. We see this in Mount St. Helens. When Mount St. Helens cut out massive areas, it cut out these great big V's and, and deep gully V shapes. And and also in Mount St. Helens, what we saw was is that um, we got these like they got, I think they got like 3,000 layers in like a week or something or a few days and like ultra fine layers and we see these layers other elsewhere on earth and the evolutionists try to tell us that each one of these layers took a year to form so this is hundreds of thousands of years old this is 300 uh, this is 300 uh, this is 3000 years old because there's 3000 layers well those layers formed in just days you know what i mean sure and and they look identical to these layers that they say formed over millions of years or hundreds of thousands of years or thousands of years it took for so and also with the valves and the vogs um the, like the, the, you got these these valves these layers in the swamps and that and they call them valves and well every time there's a rain rain falls there's a, there's another layer added every time there's a there's like heavy rain another valve it does there's not one one valve a year or two valves a year there's <clears throat> if there's 50 storms in that year there'll be 50 valves 50 layers in in there wow. 
so it, it, it's it's sort of thing it, it doesn't and also what they found with trees is every um you know yeah you have like storms quick ones but you have those real long big storms right that go for like days and just you know well what they found with those is that trees actually put on a layer just in those that time from that big storm so you might have three big storms a year and have three layers you might have 10 big storms a year and get 10 layers on a tree in a year you get different you know like it, it's not necessarily if a tree's growing in tough conditions it'll still put on multiple layers maybe a year not as many maybe but um you, they've even shown this they've planted trees that live a long time and dug them up however many decades later and they've had just too many way too many freaking layers for the amount of time that they were in the ground so we know we don't think uh this this you know anyway but this this yeah this control burn to eliminate undergrowth well it was exactly that exactly he just said it robin webster just said it, it was a control burn to eliminate undergrowth and when you constantly eliminate the undergrowth right and it doesn't like it literally takes when you burn it i know this from forestry in tasmania i've got right into this when you burn um a forest and cut it down it, it takes uh like 80 um to 200 years for it to come back because you've got these what they call coops in tasmania they log out coops and when they log a coop out they have a they they they've got old coops there that were logged in the 70s and one coop that was logged in the 30s or 40s and they say this was logged in the 40s this was logged in the 70s this was logged in the 50s this was logged in the 60s this was logged in the 80s this was logged in the 90s so you can literally see these little signs on each coop so you can see how fast the trees regrow so if you don't give it time to come back like a hundred years and what happens is when it first gets the growth back it creates a lot of um new shoots which create and anim cause animals to breed because wallabies and kangaroos only and marsupials and animals in australia mostly only breed when there's food around so you've got this this stuff oh shit i lost track of what i was saying i hate that what was i saying sea science can you remember <laughs> i'm sorry oh I'm just... you were talking about uh the marsupials um running around or something i'm sorry oh yeah I was no, the that's chat all right. too. no that's fine well I hey what about this let's 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 address the chat here real quick robin webster asked oh, why well, were nice. all the marsupials on australia and no placenta or placental mammals no no, no there is placental mammals in australia i'm uh, sure there is it's they're not all um, um I, I don't know or maybe i've never really thought about that but it wouldn't matter because you've got marsupials in south america I look up south american marsupials you know what i mean you've oh. you've got um you've you've they've found uh marsupial remains um of a marsupial possum i think it was from uh from uh egypt in uh in a fossil layer and or something like that so marsupials wow. are, were are all over the world by the way well that's a pretty good answer um <laughs> yeah let's see oh, okay yeah fair enough she oh robin robin, robin actually yeah. drove by mount st helens after the eruption that's pretty cool but that was cool to see. I mean, I just wanted to restate, you know, that, you know, these geological layers are laid down in many ways, whether it's landslides or floods or volcanic activity. You know, the fact is all these things are catastrophic events. So that really sticks to the uh, creationist explanation where, <laughs> where um, you know, it's not universitarianism, it's it's more that this erosion is happening quickly in most of the, in most cases. I mean, you have erosion from uh, just wind, uh, rain. You have the coastal erosion that happens very quickly. You know, whole mountains falling into the sea. Um, and we're we're watching it happen. You know, and and that's really the point is we're seeing the uh, land coming back to the oh. sea. Quick, quick, quick. I just remembered what I was saying. Sure. Sorry, i got to cut you off. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so the, the, you got the different coops that were logged at different times. It was logged in the 50s and 60s, and, and, and if it doesn't get time 
to grow back like over a hundred years or a hundred and some years, like they have 90 year rotations in between logging coops here in the forest. So if you keep burning it back, like when you first kill, I uh, burn it back and the regrowth creates lots of little furry animals all breed up because there's lots of food around. But then if you like, eventually it grows up and it gets real thick and it's hard to walk through for a long time, like until it, the trees grow up and it starts to thin out again a bit underneath but it's still thick and hard to walk through. So if you keep reburning that away um, every time, ah, oh, it's too hard to walk through, bugger it, just burn it. And, and ah, oh, it's too hard to walk through another five or 10 years later, burn it, another five or 10 years later, burn it again. It will, you'll eventually lose uh, biodiversity, the amount of the, the, the sort of, you won't get all the different trees growing back. Um, it, 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 it'll, it'll get less and less. And eventually it will, this forest will become thinner and thinner and thinner and become more and more like desert. So, yes, they literally did, and I can prove that from what I've just said, that changed the ecology uh, of Australia. And there was, when they arrived here, I'm, I remember seeing this years ago, they say when Australians, uh, Aboriginals arrived here 30,000 years ago, they used to say that the centre of Australia was forests and, and all um, tropical forests. I believe that's entirely possible that it was forests, but not that time frame, of course. I don't believe that time frame. That's ridiculous to me. But it's, it's yeah, it's so uh, they came here and they couldn't walk through and they basically kept burning it and burning it and they changed the ecology. They also admit that, that men wiped out the megafauna. Humans wiped out the megafauna. They admit that the Aboriginals, when the Aboriginals arrived here, there was all that megafauna and because of predation from humans that they wiped them out as well. So if the Aboriginals never arrived here and Captain Cook discovered Australia, there would have been a forest, a tropical forest, all the way through the centre of Australia from Alice Springs or from uh, way before Alice Springs, let's say from Alice Springs all the way to Darwin. And there would have been giant megafauna still alive in this country. So, yeah, they, they came in here, killed, destroyed, burnt, you know, and they changed things and bloody oath they did. And there's my evidence because they even admit that people wiped out the megafauna and that's how all of that sort of stuff happened. But as for placental mammals, I don't know about that. I, I, I don't think all of our mammals are, all of our mammals here are, well, we got, oh, no, no, the dingo was an introduction. It came, they know because... There's a mite that grows on the dingo's fur that lives on the dingo hair follicle that only lives on a certain type of, like an Asian wolf and the Thai dog, which is like from the Asian wolf. And it can only live on that breed of dog. Um, that's that type of dog. It can't live on any other dog. So they know that the dingo came here about three and a half thousand years ago, as they say, with Thai traders. And so it's not really a, 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 a native as such. So I can't think. Uh, you got the. Oh yeah, I'd have to look into that. But it wouldn't matter anyway. What's that matter? It's you know. You've got different types of animals all over the world, and Australia was an island. It was separated for a long time. A megafauna were pretty dangerous. The marsupial megafauna they probably just wiped out all the other animals, and then humans came along and yummo. Uh, Captain Cook. Well, let's put it this way, mate. I lived in the centre of Australia with Aboriginals in the Aboriginal communities. I lived in Beswick. That's the farthest community um, out uh, on the Arnhem Land. Uh, and I've and, and I can tell you, mate, the, what I've seen. And don't try to give me the the white man's you know devil juice. Set them off. Because I've seen them, mate. If 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 Captain Cook didn't discover Australia, man, and it was this anyway, it would just be a country of wars and warlords, as far as I'm concerned. It would would it be? It would make Somalia look like a paradise at its worst. <laughs> That's just my personal opinion. I'm not being a you know. I've got sure. My missus had dark skin, was what you'd call a black, black, basically Asian. So, you know, but it's true. And they and then and, and I've read the accounts of people who were who survived shipwrecks. And there was one woman <clears throat> and they put all of the white people in this cage and they come out and drag one person out, like there was about 20 of them at one stage. She was the only one that survived in the end. And they drag one person out and then spear them 
and then drag their body away and basically eat them, to cut a long story short. And then they disappear for a few days and just throw them scraps and stuff like that. And then after a few days, come back, spear another one. And this went on until everyone was gone except her. And they just treated her like a slave, basically. They And, and there's, there's a Patrick White book. Patrick White won the Nobel Prize uh, for literature. Wow. I mean, so you, they're not going to – let's they're try and tell me that Patrick White, um, he was, he's basically writing her story and and what she described and it was horrendous they're cannibals they there was one time she said when um a, a, an, a, an older woman got was angry with a younger woman for sleeping with her husband and she got into a fight with her and killed her and the tribe just dragged away and ate her and and another time after she was dead they didn't even hardly chastise the old woman at all they just grabbed her dragged away threw her on the barbie and throw another abo on the barbie and cooked her up and ate her and then another time they um they she they dragged her off to this cutting a big chunks out of this long story and this is like nobel prize winning stuff and they dragged her out into the uh into this big corroboree because they used to have corroborees in the old days where all the different tribes would get together and meet and then food would run out right because they're hunter gatherers they don't bring food with them or not very little so they after a few days of them all sitting around and talking and eating magic mushrooms and killing all the animals and eating them i suppose i don't know <laughs> i'm just guessing and and that and they run out of food and then she said all of a sudden it just erupted into a massive war where they all just started spearing each other and everything and she said just as quickly as it started it stopped and then each tribe dra dragged away their dead and and ate them what yeah man it's it's like and 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 i'll tell you something else you won't ever find anywhere which i know to be fact is the aboriginals and this is funny and true right this is funny and true i am not being a smart ass and making up a joke when i say this before i say it i just want to let people know what was, what was the name of the now listen to this. That? you got what? aboriginals listen to this aboriginals used to like in the gold rush days aboriginals used to eat still cannibals of course and um they used to prefer the chinese i'm not kidding you. like i wonder if when they ate the chinese people they got hungry faster later on i'm like <laughs> you know you eat chinese you get hungry uh, you eat. yeah yeah that's it right <laughs> And then I could just say, so, what are we what having the, tonight? Uh, hey, are Ozzy Gold's tonight? in the chat. Hey, Ozzy Gold, how you doing, man? Good right. to see you. <laughs> but it's true. It's, it's, that's actually true. They, they, and and, and the hands of white men, human hand, men's hands, white men's hands were a delicacy. Uh, that is that is a fact. That is in literature. So I'm sure it's been expunged off the internet by the communists. But it's that's actually a fact, and that's what Patrick White wrote about that. Patrick Rock White actually wrote about that in his uh oh, C Science just dropped out, he'll be back. In his maybe, I don't know. But he actually wrote about that in his uh in his book. So and they, they actually she actually said it that they considered that that's what from what she saw, the white man's hands were were, were a delicacy. So there's another side to Aboriginals. And we all so hear this stuff about Aboriginals. Um lately uh you know about how they were persecuted and all that well you don't hear the stories of like say let let me give you a, a scenario if there's a person living out in the uh wilderness say of australia and and they're you know you know they're, they're 20 30 50 miles from a town and they're starting their own little farm and they're just starting to clear and put fences up and stuff and say they've got all oh, not just starting you've got this massive property and they have to go out on this property and they have to go miles and miles away on this property for days at a time to check the fence lines and check for cattle and that. And then they come back and they found all their family, their wife and innocent little children, you know, slaughtered and, and roasted on the barbie and eaten and tortured and stuff like that. I mean, are you going to go into town back in those old days and say, oh, we need to go and find the exact people that did this and not get anybody else, just them, and and bring them to justice or are you going to go get a posse together and go attack aboriginals wherever you find them well you know they always go on about the poor little aboriginal and how he was you know how he was well sure he did have his land stolen he did have his land taken off him but he took his land off someone else before that you know or he arrived here it wasn't his land when he arrived here and and the simple fact is these that 
they did horrible things, horrible things to homesteaders. Like, can you just imagine coming home and finding your whole family dead, like just eaten? And 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 bones of your kids with tooth mark, nor marks on them and stuff, and your missus is raped and murdered and eaten, and 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 what are you gonna do? You're not gonna go into town all calm and try to, you know, we want to bring just the people that did it to justice. In those days, they got a posse together. They just went out and ran Aboriginals off the edges of cliffs in retaliation sure. and stuff like that. But you don't hear about that sort of stuff. You won't find that anywhere on the internet. But that is one hundred percent everything I've said today. If this video gets taken down or whatever is 100% true. It's, 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 there is no racism. There's no nastiness. There's no nothing. It is just fact, fact of life. That is exactly the truth. The Aboriginals did like the Chinese to eat the Chinese better than the white, the grubby, smelly white people, I suppose. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That'll make Antifa happy and, and BLM. Well, in and, some and, ways but, it's comparable to the Native Americans, you know. I mean, they had... You know, they're scalping people over it and, you know, they're wiping out homesteaders and <coughs> groups of people were going after them and killing whole villages of Indians that didn't even commit the crimes, you know, in retaliation. A lot of the times they couldn't catch the Indians that were committing the crimes or the groups and they would go and take it out on the local. Well, what they do is make an tribes. example. What, the way they look at it yeah. is if we can't get the ones that did it, we're just going to make an example out of someone else just to send them yep. a message. If you do this, this is what's going to happen. And and that's basically what happened in Australia as well. It's You had the, 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 the Aboriginals had come into some innocent homestead and never done anything to them or anything like that and kill and murder and eat their whole family, rape their kids and misses and blah, 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 you know, horrible things. And then and then you'd have them in retaliation going after the Aboriginals and the Aboriginals would come back and retaliate. And and it's it's not as clear cut as, as just the white men moving here being big evil, like in that movie Quigley, 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 the movie with um, uh, what's his name, uh, the guy from uh, oh, his name. Um, anyway, they made out the Aboriginals were just treated by the big evil white farmer, the big evil Nazi racist white farmer, and all it was just treated badly and all that. Oh, just look, come on, yeah, they they did have those sort of attitudes back then about the the blacks, but I mean, I've got to tell you, they, in my opinion, that they. I'm not saying they're they're right um, in the sense that ideologically, but they were right in the sense of hating them in the sense that they're just the things that they heard about that they've done. And I mean, white people in retaliation did horrible things. I mean, when Captain Cook first arrived here, they killed members of his uh, landing party. It looked that up. That's on record because he did the wrong thing. He offended them. They did something and they said, oh, but if he didn't do this, that or the other, they wouldn't have been offended and speared him. Rubbish. Rubbish. They speared him thinking, oh, he's something. We can just spear these guys and throw them on the barbie. You know what I mean? <laughs> Take them captive. And then they probably realised that they couldn't because of the guns and so on and so forth and the more advanced weapons. And, the, you know, Captain Cook could retreat to get away. But I think that's more likely what happened. They try to make out like he just offended them and did the wrong thing. I think more likely they're looking for any excuse. To, yeah. Oh, these wonder what these guys taste like. Mm, look at those white hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, cannibalism is, is, is strange, you know. I mean, once you get that, I guess that flavor. I don't know. It's weird. Cannibalism is yeah, strange. Well, they love. They eat each other, mate. Like I said, that woman that that had a fight in that tribe, and, right? And that, that you described that woman. She said that the older woman was jealous and angry, and she had a fight and the, accidentally hit the girl too hard with a rock or she fell back and hit a rock and died and the other tribe members didn't get upset at all. They just sort of walked over and went, oh, oh, she's dead, all right. Just drag her over here and throw her on these hot coals. And and they just sat there for three days eating her until she That's was all That's crazy. <laughs> bon appetit. That's too much. So, someone dies in your family in the old in the hunter-gatherer days because Aboriginals were always hunter-gatherers. And you, you basically is they were dinner roast roast grandma or roast you know uncle or however they died they'd be dinner not all the time 
there were some instances where they buried people and that like there would have been a lot, a lot of food around i suppose and they wouldn't have needed to eat them so they thought ah oh, we may as well just bury these ones we got heaps of freaking <laughs> yeah i wasn't even aware of the Ab 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 aborigines being um cannibals yeah. yeah that's crazy oh yeah big time hmm. i was always wary not to go out in even today mate you see those guys still believe in all that stuff like and 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 when i was with them up there and they say i'll oh, come out here and go miles out you know 100 kilometers out in the middle of nowhere with us out here yeah no thanks very much i know the freaking real stories about you guys they didn't know i knew but i bloody well did <laughs> so i wasn't going to get i wasn't stupid enough to uh go get myself caught out in the Yeah, I mean, uh, I've got something I got to take care of here. So, but okay. if you're good, I mean, we can close it up. Okay. All right. Sure. You uh, you got to go. You got to go. I suppose. Yeah. All right. I mean, it was good. Uh, I think we covered the late Tolly footprints pretty well there earlier. So, it was good yeah. to. Oh. All right. Well, we'll see. Let's see if we get the truth censored. But what I said is the truth. Everything I said might be hard to prove these days with the way they whitewash everything off the internet, but it was the truth. Anyway, all right. I think it'll stick. I think this one will stick. So yeah. we did have that thing with Andy there, but other than that, I think it was pretty smooth. Oh, yeah, that's nothing really. That's just <laughs> so what. I mean, I mean I, I, what I would say is, when you got a when you got a friend who's who's one of the top contributors to a he's the top contributor to a group called on Facebook called Sick Fucks, then then you, you, he's constantly showing me photos. I see that sort of thing all the time. That's not a shock. At all. Not to mention when sure. I was young, I was walking around all those nasty little places, checking it out, curious as a kid, <laughs> little kid, little kid. All too, right. <laughs> <laughs> I was mate and, and uh, we used to go in there and talk to the people and walk around and look at things in those days like the magazines weren't in plastic so i knew and and i might have said when i've drunk before I've i never touched them i never did i walk around with my hands behind my back I, never, uh -huh. I knew the sort of people that go into those places mate i used to walk around there in the two o'clock in the morning and that so when i was a kid you used to sneak oh. out of the house you know you know, climb out the window like kids do when you're 13 and 12 and 13. Yeah. Sure, sure. You know, walking around with all the sickos and weirdos in the middle of Sydney and look at it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was too back far, then it was, I could run it was like different. Though, sicko. Even... I could run faster than the fastest sicko in Australia, so they wouldn't have been able to catch me. <laughs> anyway. what the fuck? All right. Yeah, I'm just saying, weird. like, I used to walk around the city when I was a kid and, like, I would never let my kids do that now. So I just, yeah. I don't know. Things have changed, but. Yeah, man. I mean, it's been good talking with you. I, I got to hit the hay, though, so. All right. See you, mate. All right. Yeah, all right.